What is going on YouTube? It is Pete coming in hot with another video. Also known as that guy Pete, you just refuse to invite the gatherings. Good morning. Starting off early today. Been getting into the habit of waking up earlier and it gives you more time throughout the day. So you can do things like, you know, get a video out early in the morning and then you have the rest of the day to do what you got to do, right? So I hope everyone's doing well. Today we are here for another poll. I've been thinking about these polls and I'm thinking of organizing them into their own playlist. Um, I just think it makes sense, you know, because basically we have all the playlists where I put them out, where I talk about the information. I have a playlist about myself. I have a playlist about book reviews. Um, and I think just having a playlist about subscriber perspectives where basically all these other alternate viewpoints are coming in to give a more holistic view of the discussion. I just think having that as like a separate um, point would um, would just make sense logically. And given the naturally longer format of the whole ordeal, um, I think obviously people who are interested in a more roundtable, long form discussion, they'd have a dedicated playlist that they could gravitate towards. Um, versus the videos that I used to put out, which could range from, you know, a half hour to, you know, a little over an hour. These videos tend to go about two hours. So, you know, having that distinction might make sense. I'll have to think it through, kind of just draw it out, and then I'll probably reorganize in the YouTube studio after the fact, okay? But for now, let's talk about the poll that we're going to discuss today. Um... A subscriber, Finn Golfin, he recommended I do a poll about choosing signals. It's good stuff. It's a good topic. Um, so I thought it would make sense just to kind of get your perspective on it. Hear what you have to say. Obviously, given that this is a manosphere space, right? We're going to get majority male perspective on this stuff. But, you know, I leave the door open in case the girls have something to say. Because like I said, we're kind of going for that holistic approach where the more, you know, information we get, the better we're all going to be. Um, better off rather um, because we're just we're gonna have more complete information which isn't a bad thing for those who are new here here's how it goes um, I go through the poll itself I outline pretty much what I'm asking the context and all that I give you the options I give you the votes um, basically percentages of each option along with the margin of error for this one it's about you know around 13 percent which usually is how it goes usually I have like 200 low 200 something votes which puts us at around 13 percent margin of error which just means it could be 13 percent higher or 13 percent lower than the number I give you here and after I unpack that so you understand kind of what the general consensus is amongst the people operating um, in my subscriber base or just viewers passing by I go through the comments and I unpack them. And if you want to follow along, go to the most recent community post about choosing signals in this case, sort the comments from newest to oldest. Um, and then basically the new ones will be at the top. The oldest will be at the bottom. And then I just read from the bottom up. When I get to the end, I refresh in case somebody posted a comment while I'm doing this video, read those. And then that's it. And then I wrap up the video and we're done. Okay. So hopefully that explains the, the format so you know kind of what you're getting into with this video. So without further ado, let us begin just by reading the poll itself. So hey everyone, I hope you're getting by. I had a bit of a long weekend because I had a four day weekend um, last weekend on my end. So I wanted to enjoy that and soak it in while I had free time. This suggestion, as I said, came from Finn Golfin. So. One of the things the space talks about, in particular, pickup artist circles, because remember, in the Manosphere, there's a lot of different, um, you know, subsections. You know, we have we have the incel community, and they have their own myriad of solutions via geo maxing, escort maxing, looks maxing, stuff like this. You got that going on over there, and then over here on the um, the other side, you kind of have um, PUAs, which are pickup artists, MRAs, which are men's rights activists, MGTOWs, which are men going their own way. Um, or you kind of just have like normies, neurotypical people in the middle that are exposed to this information, but they're kind of still going about their business, maybe more of a purple pill blend. You got a lot of different people um, in the space, but PUAs in particular talk about this topic. It's the concept of choosing signals. So another term for this is dropping the handkerchief. For those who are unaware, choosing signals are nonverbal indicators of interest 
that women convey to men in order to communicate basically, hey, come over here and talk to me. Let's see where this goes, right? In the Victorian era, women would drop their handkerchief when walking past the man they found interesting, which is consistent with what we know about women's covert method of communication on average. Basically, this action would invite the man to pick up the handkerchief, return it to her, and strike up a conversation. By doing so, the woman could get the ball rolling with the guy without looking easy or desperate, and if the conversation goes nowhere, she can plausibly deny that it was him who approached her. Basically, it was his idea to start this conversation, thus avoiding the social disapproval associated with failure, aka the fact that she made a pass at a guy and the guy didn't reciprocate, right? Because again, we talk about how men are pretty accustomed to rejection. Rejection's kind of baked into the Matthew effect loop of most male experiences, perhaps with the exception of, you know, genetic giga chads, high roller Harry's and fucking uh, bad boy Brad's, perhaps, you know, they have a different loop going on, but that's not most men, right? So modern day versions of this, right, dropping the handkerchief, so to speak, um, it could be a girl looking over at you repeatedly. Maybe you're in the gym and you catch her in the mirror or looking at you a few times. Uh, remaining in relatively close proximity to you at a party to indicate availability, uh, or drawing attention to herself by being louder or more noticeable in some way, maybe laughing loud to get you to turn your head, be like, hey, what the fuck's going on over there? And you go check it out. But indicators during conversation, once you actually get past the approach, could include dilated pupils, direct eye contact, or perhaps struggling and getting red in the face if they are on the shy side. That's another way to indicate interest. Open body language, facing towards you, hands behind back with chest basically out, obviously, right? Um, playing with their hair, biting their lips, smiling, etc. Right? These are all indicators um, that she's kind of feeling the vibe and she's, she's interested in you, right? The opposite of choosing signals are often called fuck off signals. So these can sometimes be overt if they are absolutely repulsed and the conventional covert forms of communication aren't sticking the landing. Basically, she's trying to let you down nicely and if it's not really working, she'll be overt, right? But uh, covert forms would be staying far away from you and avoiding contact, which one should know that this could just be neutral invisibility that men are familiar with, right? And they just want everyone to fuck off. Some people are like that. You know, they just put the headphones on. It's like, I don't want to talk to anybody right now. That's just their neutral baseline fuck off signal. But, you know, if you're in conversation with her, she might be facing away from you. Like she wants to exit the conversation. Closed body language with her arms folded. She's getting impatient with you. Laughing nervously where she is visibly uncomfortable. Not to be confused with flustered, which is what we were talking about before when she's getting red in the face and shit like that. Uh, you know, not smiling, looking everywhere but at you. You know, she's like, oh, get me out of this fucking conversation. Or the famous boyfriend line. So if they don't say they have a boyfriend outright, they will lace this real or imaginary boyfriend into a story to make it clear to the man she's not interested. Like, you know, you might be talking about a topic and she'll be like, oh, my boyfriend. Blah, 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 blah. And in her world, that's supposed to tell you like, hey, if you had any thought in your head of trying to smash or pursue something romantic with me, yeah, get it out of your fucking head now. And the thing is, in her world, the guy doesn't even have to be real. She's just saying it so that you fuck off in that respect. And at least by her standards, you know, she's clear. Naturally, how physically attractive the man is will influence what types of signals he gets, assuming the girl is open to the idea of talking to a guy in the first place. And the crazy part is that at any given time, she could change her mind, right? So she can go from giving you fuck off signals to choosing signals or from choosing signals to fuck off signals. And, you know, it could be due to her um, initial assessment of you versus what her assessment of you is now. Example, maybe you just barely passed her looks test, but then she got to know you and then you became more attractive. That might make a switch. You know, let the guard down a little bit because now she's more comfortable and safe around you. Or the opposite. She had a positive assessment to you, then you opened your mouth and now she's like, uh, actually, no. So this happens too. Okay. But this brings us to the topic of men, right? By comparison, men are more direct and overt. 
we openly express interest to the point where overdoing it is jokingly referred to as simping. They are also very open with expressing disgust responses, but men may possess capability of being more covert and tactful, provided they are sufficiently adept at socialization. So generally, men who get more attention from women might be in that position more to either accept or reject. That guy might be a little more familiar with how to let a girl down easy versus the guy where, you know, not really socially adept. He might just bluntly be like, yeah, I'm not interested, which is just an outright rejection. And this goes hand in hand with the idea that women aren't generally receptive to simping. That is, they don't really respect guys that are like overly clingy and just like really pushy. Um, nor are they accustomed to rejection either, right? Women don't really like rejection because it's the ultimate form of social disapproval, and they're wired to avoid that at all costs. For men, it's the inverse. Men are fairly accustomed to rejection, right? But they're not really accustomed to love bombing and you know, women being very affectionate toward them, which is why love bombing as a psychological tactic is very effective against men. Right? And then they do a bait the switch on your ass. So you have to be very um, careful if, you, um, if you're getting a lot of positive attention from women. Because again, they might just be doing that to lure you in and then they pull the rug out from under you. So you have to do your due diligence, keep your head on a swivel, and make sure that you're not getting played like a violin. Okay? So there is an inherent desire gap that plays into this. Right? Men. On average, the average man wants women, the average woman, a hell of a lot more than women want the average man, right? Forget Chad's, forget Stacy's. That's a whole different realm of existence. Same goes for sub fives and, and you know, um, I guess the female sub five equivalent, which has been referred to as witches, right? Those are tales of the distribution. Very different experience from just the neurotypical average normie person. You take an average man, you take an average woman, chances are he wants to fuck her a lot more than she wants to fuck him. Yes? That's what we're talking about. And because we have this inherent desire gap where men want women more than women want men, it makes sense that men kind of evolve to be more overt in communication, to kind of cut through all the bullshit and get to the point, right? So women, on the other hand, though, they are in a position where they don't really want the guy as much as the guy wants her, so they can kind of afford to be more covert. So this could also explain why men generally aren't that great at covert communication. You don't need to hone the skill of letting people down easily if you never got approached, Black Hillburn. So women, on the other hand, get approached more, so they have to know how to let a guy down easily because they're being presented with the opportunity to do so more often than not, compared to their male counterparts. And this is aside from the dangers of angering a man as a woman, or the fact that women prefer a man communicate overtly, despite her own preference on using covert communication. Because two men communicating overtly, what? It, whoops. <laughs> it escalates, and it might lead to violence. It could, but those two men are ready for that, generally. But women, on the other hand, again, it's, they can't really risk getting into a physical confrontation with a man, so they have to let men down easily to avoid that. Ooga booga's gonna ooga booga. But the point is, these signals are nonverbal icebreakers on the part of women that convey a thumbs up or a green light. But due to men, the average man, not really understanding them by default and having to socially calibrate to figure it out, Misunderstanding and miscommunication is rampant. And this is no doubt due to blue pill programming. Blue pill programming says, you know, don't even worry about the fucking um, choosing signals, you know. You like a girl, just go tell her you like her and just be overt. And it, don't even look for signs that she reciprocates. Just fucking, you know, you can, you can sell her on it. Which, again, is already a shitty foundation. Uh, choosing signals definitely make for a, a better icebreaker than you trying to force the issue on something that's not even there. But to add even more fun to the mix, it has been theorized that men evolved to overestimate female interest. We talked about this in um, Why Beautiful People Have More Daughters. Because um, it makes sense for a man to overestimate female interest in him. Because if he underestimates and the girl actually does like him, he just missed out on a reproductive opportunity. So it's better for him to assume that more women want to fuck him 
and then just kind of be told like, no, that's not the case. Temper his expectations. Makes more sense to do that than to keep your expectations low and then miss out on all these opportunities to spread your seed, basically. Right? So that makes sense. Okay? Um, but also, right, we have to consider, despite the fact that men are overestimating female interest to maximize reproductive opportunities, the women evolved to do the opposite. Underestimate male interest so that they do not waste time with dead-end mates who won't invest. Right? Because if she overestimates a guy's interest in her and he's full of shit, now, now she's stuck with a kid and there's no parental investment, which is bad. So that's why they kind of underestimate. Sure, the birth control pill changed a lot of this um, and enabled more reckless behavior, but that's a separate discussion that we've had ad nauseum at this point. Now, as you can see, it's very subtle. And while sometimes signals can be quite conscious and overt, they can very often be subconscious and covert. People don't even realize what they're doing or what's being conveyed to them and potential opportunities are missed. You know, but some people are aware of it. This is why sometimes girls will go on, on TikTok and they'll complain like, oh my God, you know, I, I went to this place and, I, you know, I was smiling. I was playing with my hair. They don't quite say it like this, but they're getting to the point that basically like, oh, I went to this place. I made myself available, a.k.a. I sent out the choosing signals, but nobody approached me. That's kind of what she's getting at. Um, but again, guys are more overt in terms of communication. And that kind of, again makes it difficult to to get these conversations to happen especially with the blue pill programming the social engineering from that just really um throwing men off the scent like it's just sending them down the wrong path to have more successful encounters so the question here uh open to everyone right what's your experience with choosing signals as a man do you find them easy to read or hard to read as a woman do you find it easy to communicate this way and the man just gets it or do you find yourself getting frustrated and just end up communicating overtly to make your point right so it's subtle and you know sometimes these signals can be quite overt and conscious like i said um but at the end of the day most people i think um women in particular are engaging through these subconscious covert signals because they're looking to avoid rejection while men are trying to communicate overtly, and sometimes when you you force the issue too much, you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, and it just it doesn't work. Okay, but feel free to elaborate what you mean by your answer. Share your experiences. For example, the differences between sending a choosing signal and a fuck off signal, and the success of said signals may be different. But share if you find the process of communicating signals to be more conscious and scripted, or subconscious and natural. I'm looking forward to your answers and thanks for your continued support. So basically, I want you all to share your experiences on choosing signals and kind of what you think about them. So here are the options. So the options are that if you're a man, either most of the time you've caught the hints or most of the time it went right over your head. While for women, the options are most of the time signals are received loud and clear when you send them or no, they don't work at all. And then other is the last option. In terms of the voting the first option for men said, most of the time I've caught the hints, 28% said that, which means a little over one in four, but it could be as high as, let's see here, 38, 39, 4, 41%. It could be as low as 15%. <laughs> now, as you can see, you knew this was going to happen. Most of the time it goes right over the head because men are overt communicators, right? So 61% said that could be as high a 74, three in four dudes, basically. Or it could be as low as, you know, what is it? 51, 50, 49, 40, 48, which is just about one in two guys. So one out of every two guys is just going to go right over the head. Now, women, most of the time, signals are received loud and clear, 0%, um, which means, you know, still zero lowest. It could be as high as 13%, though. But the point is, obviously, aside from the fact that not a lot of women watch my channel for obvious reasons, still doesn't hurt to ask. The point is that, again, you have a lot of women out here who are frustrated in their world. They're communicating quite clearly that they're interested in their world. And another woman would look at that and be like, oh, yeah, you're totally being clear. But you have to understand that womanese 
and Menonese. <laughs> Those are two different languages. They're different languages. And if a guy in question, or a woman in question, does not have a translation device, mm, this is kind of what we're seeing. A lot of this miscommunication and misunderstanding and so on and so forth. The other option is women. Most of the time, the signals don't work at all. 3% said that. Could be as high as 16, as low as 0. Um, and then other said 9%. Some other blend of this, like, you know. Because, again, my subscribers, they tend to be a little more... Um, Deep thinkers, they, they like look at things like situation by situation basis. But most of the people voted the first two options, kind of like, hey, you know, on average, what has my life experience been? More of this or more of this? While the people who voted other probably want to get into the nitty gritty, which we'll see in the comments for sure. But 9% could be as high as what? 22 could be as low as zero. And that's pretty much been the, uh, the votes. So we covered the poll, we covered the votes. I think you all understand by now what we're talking about here. Communication methods uh, between men and women in order to get the ball rolling on either casual encounters or long-term encounters, whatever it is that you're going for, there's this mode of communication going on um, and it's baked into what's called choosing signals, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through the comments and we're gonna begin with Malakant. A friend of mine picked up that a girl at a bar liked him. So he got a choosing signal. So he asked her out. His lawyer thinks he'll get away with a fine if he takes a plea deal. <laughs> this is, of course, referring to the idea that, again, there's just a lot of miscommunication and misunderstanding. Men tend to overestimate the signals, right? Like if they actually catch a signal, they might overestimate it. You know, pegging her interest at like an 8 out of 10 when maybe it's more like a 4 out of 10 so they get a little overzealous. And then that choosing signal becomes a fuck off signal and then a me too comes after that and then yeah. So that's kind of what he's joking about here and Flemutter says yeah that was a good chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly this happens more often than not. And I think the fact that again aside from blue pill programming. Aside from that in an increasingly atomized and closed off world the ability to pick up on these nuances in communication is becoming more and more difficult, for sure. And naturally, that, that um, handicaps the dating market. But it could be argued that, again, if you're at that positive tail end of the distribution, then the game changes. But most of us are not there, so, yeah. Silverback Wamahue. How you doing, Pete? Hanging in. Went with the first option. Most of the time, I've caught on. The fickle gods, as Stardust put it, granted me an excellent overall capacity for both covert and overt communication methods. Got yourself a solid translation device. That's what's up, brother. I was never really all that frustrated and caught on quick to girls who took a liking to me, based on their appearance. I would consider making the move or not making the move. Fair. That's the decision you're faced with when a woman chooses you via choosing signals. You as the man, the ball is in your court. All right. Am I going to do something with that or am I not going to do something with that? Fair. I do have to say, though, that in my more youthful years, it was quite frustrating being unable to tell whether a girl had sent the signal or not. It was so covert, like a quick time event amidst the cutscene, that it literally flew over my head. Yes. So I think with age comes wisdom, right? So I think when you're younger, your hormones are really riding high as a guy when you're young. So a lot of the subtext that women have that awareness of because, again, the hormones aren't riding as high for them. It kind of um, makes it difficult to detect. But then as you get older and you've gotten some good and bad experiences under your belt, you start to see, okay, this is something that, hey, I should at least investigate. This, you know, this could call it a fluke, call it a that. You know, you're able to just sort of look at it as situation by situation basis. But it sounds like over time, the natural progression for a neurotypical normie, right, is that, you know, it starts out, you're kind of, um, you know, tripping over your own feet a little bit, you know, you got to roll your tongue back up into your mouth. But then as you age, you get to a point where, um, okay, I kind of know what's what, what works and what doesn't. But um, that's good. That's good that you have your translation device. And I'm sure many others watching wish they had it. Zoso says, other, man. They went right over my head until 26, give or take. Now I get them most of the time. 50% plus 
plus one is most of the time. But I do my best to laugh at them and play dumb. Um, are the single voting options your choice or YouTube's choice? Um, so YouTube, I think they make it so you only, you can only pick one. You can only pick one. Uh, Darkest Night says you must be Chad. So for Darkest Night in particular, um, I would say this. You know, I, I think it was Wheat Waffles who said it. I think Wheat Waffles, he said, it's not so much about having the traits that make you Chad. It's about avoiding having the traits that make you sub five. Right? That's what it's, that's what it is. And I think most normal, uh, normy, neurotypical, you know, four to six range guys, those guys, again, what they're doing is they're just trying to avoid falling off the cliff and ending at the left tail of the distribution. Because, again, having a glow up that gets you into chad territory is very unlikely. So most guys who are in that normie range, again, it's pretty much what Zoso is saying here. You know, sometimes you get a signal, sometimes you don't. And then whether or not you're able to pick up on the signal and act on it, that's a separate issue. It has nothing to do with your physical appearance. It has to do with your social adeptness and calibration. While I agree with you, though, Darkest Knight, that if you're in the sub-5 territory... Again, the odds that you're going to be getting choosing signals is excruciatingly low and getting fuck off signals is probably more common because it's very, very, very difficult, nigh impossible for your non-physical attributes to really shine through in spite of that. That's the unfortunate truth because if someone doesn't find you physically attractive but they find you interesting, you're just a friend. Yeah, and the signals will reflect that. You're just a friend. So probably some soft fuck-off signals would be present if they view you as a friend. But hard fuck-off signals if they want nothing to do with you. Bogdan Pugh says, chose other. There have been two times in my life during high school where I had the strange experience of being approached by a woman to convey the interest of another woman. I mean, that's high school, right? This girl likes you. What do you want me to tell her? Tee! <laughs> in one of those cases, the woman was a friend to the other, and the second time she was a classmate of hers. It felt kind of bizarre to me at the time that they did not approach me directly because women are not overt communicators and women really hate rejection. So if they even perceive a risk of rejection, um, they don't want the peers in their social circle to see that. So maybe they'll send someone that they trust to go and do that for them. And that's probably why you saw the behavior that you saw. Um, yeah, and chose to deliver the message to the third party. But I think it's because I generally have a serious demeanor with a sharp stare, and that could be seen as scary to approach. Anyway, both of them were short-term flings, didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, because probably when you actually started, like, seeing each other, again, whatever the stuff that's required to make you kind of conclude, like, okay, this is long-term material, it just wasn't there. Yes, but um, that seems like like a, a semi-overt signal <laughs> using an intermediary, but not uncommon in high school. But later, when I was in college, I met this girl online on MySpace. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember MySpace. <laughs> yeah, MySpace, man, that, that shows our fucking age. <laughs> yeah. I think what, what I liked about MySpace in particular was that you could pick a song and then basically like that song was sort of an expression of your personality. So like they come onto your page, they hear your song and they kind of had an idea of sort of what scene you were into. So I mean, that, I did like that. But she was a second year student in foreign languages and literature, very articulate and very pretty. Okay. We went on a first date, all went well. And afterwards she asked me on a second date. That's usually how the progression goes. Yes. We went to a big park with a lake in the middle during the evening. It was summer and we stayed till it got dark. The strange thing about this experience is that earlier in the evening, we sat a while on a bench and talked. That's, yep, that's what benches are for, conversation. I was getting touchy-feely with her. She wore a cute dress with the skirt just above the knees. At one point, I put my hand on her, on her thigh. She loudly indicated that she doesn't like that and wanted my hand off. I said to myself, okay, too soon. Fair. She communicated it clearly and directly. Fine. Later, as it got dark, we walked along the lake, holding hands. Before we knew it, we found ourselves alone. Not many people left in the park at this hour. As we were walking and talking about random things, she suddenly stopped and asked me a strange question. Can I kiss you? I really want to kiss you to see how it feels like. 
Yeah, most girls don't just directly ask that. So that means she must have really liked you. But what's a guy to say when a pretty girl asks you for a kiss? Of course you say yeah. And by earlier indications, I thought it was going to be just a short smooch. Oh, how wrong I was. She grabbed my head and proceeded to shove her tongue deep in my mouth. Then flings it all over the place. Lasted for about 20 seconds. At one point, I started to have difficulty breathing. It was the most bizarre and aggressive kiss I have ever received from a girl. After all that, she said, mm, it was okay. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a girl. Hot, cold. <laughs> and as a younger guy, you're probably sitting here like, oh, uh. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? Meanwhile, I was looking at her shocked, still struggling to understand what happened. Exactly. <laughs> did she did she rape my fucking mouth with her tongue? Did I like it? To this day, I have no idea why or where that kiss came from. I had a relationship with this girl for about a year. We broke up because she left the country after finishing university to work abroad. I think she is in Germany now. Moral of the story, you can't predict what a woman will do or how her attitude will change from one moment to another. Exactly. Exactly. So, fellas, one thing I would say when you're in a relationship with a girl is this. You must mentally be prepared for it to end at any given time for any reason. For any reason. Guys, we tend to be more logical. We tend to be more grounded. So we're looking at a relationship with a girl and it's like, listen, if, if, you know, if she's got what I want, she's checking off most of my boxes and it's kind of going smoothly. Like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll let's, let's keep going with it. Sure. While women, they, they do have some propensity to, to have logic, but they primarily operate on emotions. So in that regard, she might really be digging you and want to do something like that with you, like maybe the first month of the relationship. Then you get to like month six, and it's like still kind of wants to do it. And then you're a year in, and then she gives you no affection at all. And you're like, what the fuck? This isn't what I remember. And then she just leaves your ass because she's not feeling it anymore. So you always have to be mentally prepared for that progression to happen so that when it does happen, you're not surprised, you know? Um, that's just kind of the L that you have to hold as a man when you get into relationships. You always have to deal with the fact that they might break up with you, right? 80% of relationships, people between 18 and 30 end. And probably most of the time, it's the women ending the relationships, not the men. So what does that tell you? Men, part of the reality of being a man is that you have to be prepared uh, for this type of hot, cold bullshit. It just kind of comes with the territory. And it's very unpredictable. It's like the weather. Yeah, sure, the weather app tells me what it's going to be, but then they fucking change the fucking weather every, every, you know, every hour. Oh, no, it's actually going to be this. Oh, no, it's actually going to be that. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what the fuck's going on either. It's kind of like that. So as far as approaching women goes, uh, I very rarely do warm approaches, but uh, only if I find her attractive and notice she has an interesting personality. Right, right. Substance and form, right? When you're young, yeah, form is usually enough to get you to come to the table. But again, as you get older, the hormones kind of go down a little bit. It's like, all right, can I really have a conversation with this girl or is it just a waste of time? Yeah. I never once bothered to read signals. Not that I couldn't read them, but... Playing psychological cat and mouse games is just too cumbersome and annoying for me. Um, and I realized that in some situations during warm approach, she may actually like me, but choose to reject me so I can try harder. And to that I say she can go fuck herself. I agree. If she can't be direct and sincere with me, I won't bother. If she can't bare minimum be direct and sincere in womanese, right? Which basically just means... In the saying department, she's sending positive choosing signals. And in the doing department... She is receptive to your advances. If those two things aren't like matching up, it's like, yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm not going to play this stupid bullshit. I'm an adult. So I totally empathize with that viewpoint. Absolutely. Bonus stupid story. Uh, I just remembered. When I was 24, I used to take the bus every day so I could reach work at this internet service provider. One day the buses were running late and the, a mountain of people piled up at the stop. So when I took the bus, it was loaded with people. I felt like a sardine in a can. This woman ended up right in front of me. She was young and fit. Because the bus was so tightly packed with people, her butt was rubbing against my crotch. So naturally, my dragon started to wake up. She probably felt the assets rising in my pants. 
I tried to remain calm and avoided eye contact. And what did she do? Intensified the rubbing, of course. I had to endure that for three bus stops. Can someone please explain to me what was that? Not your typical choosing signal, I would imagine. Catch you later, Pete. Yeah, she wanted you to talk to her. <laughs> oh, man, dude, yeah. She wanted you to talk to her, man. You could have probably locked down the phone number and, uh, you know, continued that. That quest line. <laughs> um, for sure. But, yeah, man. I mean, in that position, yeah, probably the the... Conventional wisdom would have told you to to pursue that and whatever came of it came of it Like I said, you always have to be prepared for it to end when you're a man Satan's bloody anus You change your name all the time, but man, it's fucking you come up with some funny shit Women do not engage in risk when it comes to dating generally. No, correct. Yes, she will flirt. She'll touch your arm She'll smile, but even women that are in a relationship will do that right which in my opinion personally is just disrespectful behavior uh, to the guy with whom she is in a relationship. But if she's interested in you, it is inherently too risky to her ego to outright say it. I agree. The real threat of rejection will stifle any direct words. Alcohol can change this, though. Correct. How many videos have you seen where guys interview girls while they're fucking hammered and they just fucking spill all the beans? Exactly. Why do you think a lot of these girls especially the ones racking up those counts with be a hookup culture, they have to be hammered to do it. Mm -hmm. So she wants, needs you to take the risk of asking her out, saying she's beautiful. Then she has the best of both worlds. She knows you like her. She has gotten validation and the upper hand. She could turn you down. She can ghost. She can get a few dates and obviously free meals out of a place. She would never dine alone. It is against their inherent nature and thousands of years of roles to just be available. Correct. So I think, honestly, like I just said, it's an inherent risk being a man. Basically, your head is constantly have to be on a swivel and you have to be mindful of whether or not you're getting played or not. You have to be mindful of that. Um, otherwise, you're going to continue to get played and taken advantage of, potentially. If you're lucky, you're with a girl who's not like that and then, again, you could afford to be a little less guarded. But even then... You kind of have to, again, just be mindful of what's going on. You can't just be, like, clueless. But when they aren't interested, that is as obvious as the sun. However, they sometimes inadvertently or not send messages that could be interpreted as interested. Again, men's propensity to overestimate interest. Upon which the now-encouraged male is met with an awkward moment. She never makes eye contact again. Yes. And this is, unfortunately, a very real reality. Because, again, a lot of men, they're not aware of this mode of communication because their whole lives they've been given blue pillisms uh, and beaten over the head with this idea of you know approach take initiative you don't have to worry about signals she'll like you just for who you are and all that shit when really what we have to do is we have to tweak it and say no you need to be aware of where you are in the looks hierarchy and based on that move accordingly and assuming you do pass the looks test you need to be mindful of these sub of this social subtext you need to be aware of that before you approach plan b says never receive choosing signals leslie says is there such thing as girl game can a girl be a female simp these are actual questions not just rhetorical ones so i mean yeah i mean girls can be you know um very good at banter quick on their feet, things like this, you know. Unfortunately, nowadays, we do have a lot of girls where they just kind of expect men to do all the heavy lifting and the socialization and carry the conversation. But there is such thing as a girl who can definitely pull her weight in a conversation and definitely make it more interesting. And honestly, to men, that's pretty impressive uh, because it's so rare. Because I think you just got a lot of these girls, they just show up with their tits and ass and they just think that's enough when it's not. Can a girl be a female simp? See chat. Yeah, you want to see female simps, um, check out the comedian Matt Reif. Dude's a proper Chad. He's funny, though. He's a proper Chad, and, like, tons of girls just come to his comedy shows just to simp and drool over him. Yeah, so the answer is yes. Female simps do exist. So we have Water Not Water saying, Girl game is basically doing everything in your power outside of outright asking the guy out. Yep, 
female simp is a woman that seeks the validation and attention of a man that she has pedestalized. Yep. Leslie says, very precise definitions, which for better or worse, both apply to me. Your definition of female simp hits especially close to home. The Darkest Knight says, girls are the real ones with game. Men don't have game. That's why they call themselves players, because they are a player in her game. True in the sense that men very rarely have the power to dictate terms. As a general rule, women choose, men are chosen. As a general rule. Um, however, there is a select group of men that they have the power. They hold the cards. But for most men, especially the average neurotypical normie, no. Interesting observation. The men are just players in a game in which the women are the referees. <laughs> Finn Goffin says, female simping could be girl giving food or sweets to a guy. Leslie says, yep, guilty as charged. Satan's bloody anus. Pick me's which you are borderline flirting with, is a female simp. All these Manosphere channels attract a token girl. It's a pretty good racket. Whereas I'm an invader troll in the fem channels, usually talking about they are narcissist. Apparently they all have one. <laughs> I'm not completely sure of the difference between a pick me and a female simp, but I'm probably guilty on both counts. So a female simp is just someone who's just very... I guess communicating overtly because th their attraction to the guy is just that intense um, that that they're just going to simp. But a pick me is just someone who knows what guys want and even though they themselves don't really have what guys want, they will present themselves as if they do have what guys want in order to get those guys. That's kind of um, what a lot of us view pick me as. Um, though there are women who sincerely do have what men want and they market themselves as such. And then other women who clearly are not as high on the female hierarchy ladder as they are, will try to drag them down by calling them a pick me. Um, femcell to feminine replies, female simps do exist. I refer to them as fimps. Remember to credit me if that slang ever takes off, wink, wink. And the behavior of fimps is obvious. The girls crying, fainting, screaming in hysterics over their favorite soft featured near femboy looking boy bands, all male R&B groups or so male pop stars, solo male pop stars. Yep. Girls overly complimenting and repeatedly exclaiming you're so hot over and over again to males that are eights, nines and tens, maybe even upper tier gold sevens. Yep. If you follow the looks based social media careers of some of these male fitness models, e-boys, e-chads as I personally call them, you can credit that to me as well and attractive male streamers. They don't just attract gay or bi men who drool over them and send them money. Each ad also has lots of legitimate female followers, horny, lonesome cougars, milfs, matures, overly invested in young fangirls, and sugar moms will send each ad and e-boy Brad money and gifts. Yep, this is a 100% thing as they rack in the dollars using their male looks privilege. Essentially, yes, there is a class of men that get to live like women. Yes. Pick Misha and Barbara the Builder are more well-known, homely examples of fimpery. Average women, sometimes below average women who chase after men, give men money and gifts. Overly invest in men, building guys up, often to be left for his dream girl anyways, or the story goes. Yes. It seems that if the man is hot enough, this seems to trigger a type of role reversal in women's girl game. Correct. And all of a sudden she is pursuing him, flirting more heavily and treating him as the prize. And honestly, I think the best relationship dynamics are when it's like that, where again, she's invested and wants to work for him because I think men, when they go into relationships, most of us, uh, especially the normie tier men, they understand that you do have to put a little work into the relationship. We almost inherently understand that. That's kind of part of the blue pillisms we were all programmed with, put the work in. While women were just kind of told, yas queen, you're a princess, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So having the dynamic shift a little bit where a woman puts a little work in, I think that not only, again, makes her man happier, but it makes her realize that, hey, yeah, if she actually has to work for it, she might appreciate it a little more too. So yeah, it's sometimes controversial to say, but I fully believe a man can be the prize, especially if society deems him high quality enough and he has an abundance of options to choose from and the competition from women to access him is extremely fierce. Women do sometimes simp for Chad and Brad. Keisha will even simp for Tyrone and give him money to build him up and hold him down. 
it's relatively embarrassing female behavior, to be honest. It's embarrassing when you give it to guys who don't deserve it. Yeah. But she continues to build and say, girl game is just being Stacy. I'm only partially joking. <laughs> just be Stacy, sis. <laughs> Women have their own strategies that in some ways can parallel men's. Convincing looking wigs and extensions, makeup or fake up to smooth over skin flaws and contour facial structure, eyelash extensions, etc. as forms of women's looks maxing. Correct. Just like how some men fraud height by wearing certain types of shoes or shoe installs, women body fraud too with body shapers, push-up bras, and tummy tamers. We live in a world of both online and offline catfishing and frauding. Both genders do this. Yes, but it's going to be reflected in the fact that the dudes can't get the boners and the girls are drier than Sahara Desert once all those looks maxing things are removed. Yes. So some women's uh, dating coaches will give advice that sometimes resembles status maxing, social status proofing, and social halos. The thing is men don't give a fuck about that. Women care about it if men have it, but men don't give a shit if you have it or not. They encourage fake it until you make it social dating strategies by advising women to pretend to be wealthier, classier, more put together, more eloquent, more cultured and refined than they actually are, and so strategically target specific social scenes and neighborhoods to access certain groups of men via freestyle dating strategies and happy hour hustling. The problem is, though, again, if a lot of the guys that she's trying to attract, let's say the man perceives that he is not as high status or high wealth as the woman is, again, he looks at it like he can't even be in his natural masculine and provide for that girl. He can't even do that right? Women always joke and say like, hey, you know, if I'm not with the right guy, he can't bring out the feminine in me, right? Well, for guys, that's kind of true too. You know, with the wrong girl, it's kind of hard for him to be in his masculine. Because again, this girl is just so fucking hyper masculine and on the other end of the spectrum that it's like, how do I even like step into my role as a man in this? And if I can step into my role as a man as this, is the juice worth the squeeze to put in all that effort? Probably not. So, yeah, that's obviously a situation that is, you know, probably going to backfire. But it's called happy hour hustling, apparently. In other words, pretend you're an it girl already, even if you really aren't. Pretend to be high value, high maintenance, pretty privileged Stacy. The point for these women is faking their social status is to live in the fantasy and live in the delusion in the hopes that men will see them as higher value and perceive her to be the real prize, the trophy. Here's the problem, though. Women here are measuring their value by male metrics. No good. You got to use female metrics. What do men care about? They care about women who can cook, who can clean, who have not fucked every guy on the block. They like women who are in their feminine. They like women who are fit and in shape and they take care of themselves. This is what most neurotypical normie men are looking for. Are there tales of the distribution? Are there people with fetishes and this, that, and the third? Of course. But is that what we're talking about here? No. We're talking about the general rule. So, these women's coaches emphasize keeping standards high and basically teaching women to have a certain frame when it comes to men. Femininity coaches do this too. So yes, Leslie, girl game is real. Just watch some of these hypergamous femininity dating coaches. There are many different flavors of this all over YouTube. Some of these women are more ruthless and amoral than others. Some have softer, more sincere tone and style. Obviously, again, being Stacy or Stacy Light helps. Yes, it does. For both men and women, it seems, everything starts with looks or perception, no matter the game one is running or playing. Absolutely. Satan's bloody anus says, you two, referring to Leslie and um, Femcell to Feminine, you two are lucky to have this playing field. Might even get a husband out of this. Men will settle if they are desperate enough and sufficiently blue pill programmed. Yes. And you're finally broke down enough. You will too. By the way, you're both weird. That's not an insult. Normal women are dull and thin skinned. So I think he means like you're abnormal. You're not what he conventionally would expect. Okay. Marcus replies to this thread and says, I think all the status posturing is bullshit. I think any man worth his salt would be repulsed by fake nails. I think most dudes on a mission want a girl that is ready for that same mission. Correct. If a girl's over here on her own mission, it's like, okay. But if that mission aligns with his mission, that's a different story. You can make it work. But generally speaking, if this guy's over here, he wants to do X. And he's expected to lead in the relationship and do all this shit. But she's over here. She wants to do Y. It's going to cause a problem. Of course. 
Um, so not to say career driven, just not a fucking vegetable in life skills and values. Girl game, in my opinion, is just going after what you want and actually play, paying one dude attention while being able to forsake the rest, targeting her affections to get what she wants. Sweets are probably a good example of this. Simping is more so pedestalizing at great cost to oneself. Correct. Or girl game being the ability to raise a simp army that will pay your bills. One or the other. I suppose it depends on what your objective is. Yes. But women can do status posturing without fake nails. Some women imitate classier old money aesthetics, for example. Feminine status posturing doesn't mean ratchet long fake nails. Yes, it's ratchet girls trying to pretend they're not ratchet girls. Hiding the things that they know are going to disqualify them. Richard Jones replies and says, It seems that if the man is hot enough, this seems to trigger a type of role reversal in women's girl game, and all of a sudden she is pursuing him, flirting more heavily and treating him like the prize. Quote, That sounds very familiar to what much younger woman was doing to me from 2021 to 2022. She kept stalking me online and in person and fooled around very heavily. I quickly found out she had daddy issues. Yeah, you don't say. She's looking for someone to replace the daddy that abandoned her. Mm -mm. That was a pretty good exchange. Um, just give me a second. I'm, I got to go take a leak because the bladder's telling me, like, you got to go. So just uh, give me a second. Okay. Much better. <laughs> so let's go ahead and continue the conversation with Citramate. So Citramate says, I'm actually pretty good at social signals. Okay. Or at least I think I am. All right. A little bit of second guessing there. But let's go on. Uh, I've known that ugly people get treated a lot worse since high school. And instead of pretending I was above it, I tried to compensate and make sure I'd, it, I'd be a bit nicer to them to level the default playing field. He's referring to a horn effect, sometimes called phalo effect. As a result, I found some real diamonds in the rough, but also some very annoying and socially awkward people. This also includes women. It's been pretty obvious when they like me. It doesn't happen nearly as much anymore since the nice, ugly girls do eventually find partners. It just doesn't happen with girls that I like, or at least it seems like they may be interested, but then they clearly display I want out signals afterwards. Right. So they initially assessed you. <laughs> then they got to know you a little bit, and then they reassessed. Remember what I said. Women reserve the right to change their mind at any given time for any fucking stupid reason. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. As a man, you have to be prepared always for the possibility that whatever starts may end, okay? That being said, I share your experience in that, generally speaking, when it was me pursuing a girl under a blue pill mindset, basically um, didn't really pay attention to choosing signals, and I just kind of went for it because I found them attractive, it did not end well. It ended very poorly, crash and burn. However, when the shoe was on the other foot and I actually was mindful of choosing signals, I did pay attention to it. And when girls were giving me indicators of interest and then I acted upon it, that went a lot better. Yeah. Which is why this conversation is so important. You have to be mindful of this mode of communication. But maybe hot girl signals are different. But if they are anything similar to ugly girl signals, I just don't get a lot of them. And when I do get them, there is nothing that says please escalate. Yeah, I think honestly... Um, whether it's a hot girl or a ugly girl or a normie girl in between, the mode of communication is the same. It's, it's, um, subtle, it's covert indicators of interest. They may have different ways of indicating the interest, but at the end of the day, the mechanism is the same. Okay. And it sounds like you never had anything that said, Hey, escalate. But darkest night replies and says, hot girls will make the same signals, but way less and dependent, it's dependent upon your looks and height. If you think you're in her range, she might give you signals. But most of the time, they keep to themselves. So if they are, um, they must really like you because they have tons of options, even better than you. True. You look at your average hot girl. Let's say she's at a club, she's at a bar, she's in a gym, wherever. Yeah, that girl is usually minding her business, not paying any mind to anybody around her. Why? Because she has so many fucking options. Why would she acknowledge anyone's existence? So if such a girl is sending you signals, then of course, um, chances are there's something about you that draws her to you that's different from all these other options, at least in her mind. While obviously the less attractive a woman is, the more she's going to send out choosing signals because again, your looks 
are proportionate to the effort you must put in. Correct. Okay. Uh, but see, this is why I say girls should approach because no matter what, ugly girls always find someone and it won't take them tons of approaches. But an ugly short guy, it's over for him. Juggernaut law is what he is talking about here. Some guy somewhere will do it. <laughs> Men will take pizza over no pizza. Women will only take good pizza or what they perceive to be good pizza. This is the reality. So now the Darkest Knight has his own comment. He says, Honestly, women should just approach men. It will make things much easier for both genders. No matter how brutal a woman looks, I guarantee it won't take that many approaches for him to find someone who likes them back. But for men, it's over. If you aren't tall and decent looking, you'll be putting your life in danger and your sanity in danger going through the rigor of approaching women. He is referring, of course, to the negative Matthew effect spiral. If failure is all... is, And uh, Stardust recently did a video on this. If failure is all you have known... Uh, it's going to cripple you and you're going to struggle to find the motivation uh, to keep going. Not just with women, but with all things. If you if you suffer enough L's in life, um, it's going to be pretty rough for you. I would say the normies, right? Again, it's pretty, pretty even in terms of successes and failures. Um, not with women specifically, but just in life. So they might have an easier time recovering from failures and, uh, you know, optimizing successes and, you know, capitalizing on them than, say, a sub-5. While Chad doesn't have to think about this at all. But Bogdan Pugh replies and says they will if they are desperate enough to snatch a particular Chad. True. True. You know, there are some guys that they're just so attracted to that their covert communication becomes overt. But as a normie, you can't count on a woman communicating with you like that. You just can't. Because you're just you're not that hot, period. It is what it is. Sorry the genetic gods did not bless you. You chose the wrong parents, as Stardust likes to say, right? <laughs> Satan's bloody anus. Dude, that name, man. I feel like he changed his name to that just so I'd have to keep reading that over and over and over again. We are talking about average women, which is the problem. Sixes and sevens are not approaching men of the same caliber. And they aren't approaching worse or better. She might flirt with Brad Pitt, but she will never ask him out. She knows her lane. She just wishes a much more attractive guy would. She will beautify her dating profile with the best photos. She will talk to him at work. She will revolve around his social circles. And she might get lucky one Friday night, not knowing he has a harem. But she will make Average Joe run a marathon for a glass of water from Average Jane. And that is the inherent problem. That is a function of social engineering, oofy doofy innovations, such as social media and dating apps, right? Think about it. That in combination with the birth control pill, which means that you can just have more casual sex without fear of pregnancy and things like this, in combination with illusory options via DMs being filled up with normies drooling over them, it creates this dynamic where she thinks, hey, if I go out into the real world, it's the same as it is on the internet. And it's not true. Of course it's not. But because she thinks it's true, you got a six and seven walking around thinking they're a nine and a ten. And of course, that is just peak delusion. But what do you expect? From her perspective, she's having a positive Matthew effect loop constantly being fueled day in, day out. So of course, she's going to think that she's more valuable than she actually is. Reality will eventually check her, but by the time it does check her, it's too late. Darkest Knight just sums up and says, be a Chad, decent looking and tall, or be ignored. Definitely online, for sure. Absolutely. The Y2A problem says, I remember something from my senior year of high school. It was PE gym class. I attended a Catholic high school, so the class itself was co-ed. We were playing baseball, and I was literally on third base. The baseball third base, not the wink, wink, nudge, nudge third base. So this girl was also there, and she was asking me all these questions about the prom. She was pretty much asking me every question under the sun that wasn't, will you go to prom with me? It wasn't until I was 28 that I figured she was dropping the biggest hint I'll probably ever see in my lifetime. Yep. Exactly. When a woman is talking to you about a certain topic, make no mistake, there's a reason she's talking to you about it. See the definition of girl game in the reply to my comment. Yep. 
you girls need to start carrying hankies again and dropping them for us so we can get an idea on whether you're just being nice or are actually interested. Get your PR team in this. <laughs> forget the birth control pill. Forget feminism. Forget the sexual revolution. The real societal game changer was Kleenex. Because of this Windows 11 innovation, women no longer carried handkerchiefs. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Just drop a used applicator. I'll pick it up. Ma'am, is this yours? Ma'am? Hello? <laughs> It'll be like Cinderella, but gross. <laughs> I am going to assume you are referring to makeup applicator. In that case, I could see the conversation flowing very well. The guy could say something like, is this yours? I mean, you don't really need any makeup since you are so naturally pretty already. The girl would then blush. The guy could say something like, I won't keep you. You are probably getting ready for a date. She would then say, no, actually, I was just going to do homework tonight. He would then say, really? Uh, that's hard to believe. Could I have your number? Slam dunk. Um, I would say two out of 10, trash, fan fiction. Um, get back to reality. <laughs> You're reading too many books, Leslie. Satan's bloody angel says, I say ex-wife, but we didn't get a divorce. She fell off a cruise ship at night. Hey, she ain't my wife no more, is she? Okay. <laughs> Leslie, the murderer widower shtick seems to work for some guys. I have heard that Scott Peterson gets all sorts of love letters in prison. And it seems like O.J. Simpson has always had a girlfriend since getting out of jail. You're not the first. Do not underestimate women's attraction to bad boys. Correct. The dark triad profile, which is psychopathy, Machiavellianism, and narcissism. Yep. I'll, girls will bitch, piss, and moan about fuckboys left and right, yet they will rack up body counts trying to change them. Old as time itself, man. And as a guy who isn't a fuckboy, you're just kind of hoping that if you get into a relationship with a girl, that she doesn't have that kind of rap sheet in history, which is all another talk that, again, we've talked about at nauseum. More dread. Choosing signals has never happened to me ever, let alone me noticing it. Yeah, definitely doesn't happen often. That's for sure. Especially nowadays with the internet and shit. It happens less and less even for normies now. Richard Jones. I got the hints. Trouble is, none of it is sincere, like it used to be in the 90s. They give off the signals or flat-out groper ask me out, simply in order to try to bait me to become a new orbiter. So I play along to see what the technique she's using. Yeah, it's like when a girl flirts with you, and then, you know, it seems like it's going well, and then she slap, then she basically comes around and says, hey, sign up for my OnlyFans. It's like, you bitch. <laughs> man, I mean, you can't knock her. You know, it's a business model, but Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I also sometimes get very obvious signals from much younger men in the showers of the gym, which is a bit disconcerting, but I guess flattering if it was if I was that way inclined. Each to their own. A man giving those kinds of signals isn't a man. I mean, he's just gay. Gay. I mean, listen, yeah, those situations as a straight man are always going to be very uncomfortable. But again, you just have to kind of take it in stride and move on with your life. Again, whether you get a choosing signal from a dude or a chick, you just, again, as the man, you always have a choice whether you act on that or not. And obviously, as a straight man, you're not going to act on that if another man does that shit. You know, let him go send a signal to a gay dude instead. It's not your problem. This knock says, tough question. Even in hindsight, you can't know everything that's gone over your head. And whatever you did catch, you can't know if it was meant as a signal. I'll never know about the girl who seemingly hated me throughout high school, but was suddenly nice and went to feel my beard one time in that in the last semester. Or my female friend who curiously asked if I had someone to go to for sexual needs. That's pretty fucking direct, my friend. <laughs> Chicks don't just walk up to you and be like, hey, you know, uh, Lil Johnson down there, you got that shit taken care of? You got a girl looking at that? That's, um, that's pretty fucking direct. <laughs> Even with all the context in the world, sometimes it's impossible to say for certain. Let's also not forget that women have horny moments too. They may send genuine signals that they quickly regret. Good luck going back to get answers. True. Again, women reserve the right to change their minds at any time. But this reminds me of a funny video I saw called um, Casually Explained, Is She Into You? So you're chilling on the couch with this girl and she's like, hey, you know, let's go upstairs to my bedroom and have sex. Is she into you? Well, you can't really tell. I mean, maybe she's just being nice because she's Canadian. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> ladies, you have to understand. We try so hard <laughs> to just understand what the fuck you're saying. but um, Or rather, not saying with your signals. But um, 
Yeah, again, because you can change your mind, even then we have to be on our toes. But I guess we can't do entirely without signals, but they should only be seen as shorthand or gesticulations. If they help the other understand, fantastic. But ultimately, it's in your hands to get the message across that you're seeking a meaningful relationship. And for that, you might have to break out this thing called language. If an adult puts ultimate blame on the other's ability to pick up signals, they are either very childish or they were seeking a relationship that was only fickle and superficial. And I think that's probably true. I think a lot of women, especially these days, they do want something kind of like a situationship to start and then build off of that. That seems to be the common mode of building nowadays. Um, but that being said, ladies, if you really want something badly enough, you're sooner or later going to have to switch to men and ease and use overt communication. Otherwise, you might lose something that you really wanted. But yeah, my answer, man, most of the time it went right over my head. Yeah. Leslie said, if I were to touch a guy's beard, it would be because I was thinking about kissing him. Yep. Facts. That's exactly what it means. That's exactly how I would take it, too. Just think about it. Beard is in very close proximity to the lips. It's like when a girl's looking at your lips. It's like, what the fuck are you looking at my lips for? Oh, I know why. Exactly. So Emperor Dion says, Pete, I don't know why you even try to address women. LOL. There are no women watching this, and we are way past the point that women are having an open mind to understand the male pain. Contrary to what you are saying, I actually do look at the demographics of who views my videos. And I would say if on a lot of these videos recently that I've been doing with these polls, I do get more, I do get more female viewers than the baseline. Usually when I talk about just like topics, I don't get a lot of female viewers on that. But when I'm talking about like people's opinions on things, like the more subjective stuff, women are a little bit more receptive to that and they actually do watch. Okay, um, but they may not stay in the conversation. But make no mistake, Emperor Dion, women are always watching. They are always listening, right? They're not going to tell you that because that would, in their mind, then they're like, oh, well, now I'm dignifying the manosphere. Well, I don't want to do that because it's a bunch of toxic, misogynistic bullshit, right? These guys don't know what they're talking about. They're full of shit. They'll never openly say it. But look, I look at the analytics. They don't lie. But anyway, that's... Neither here nor there. Let's continue. Anyways, choosing signals easy. If the girl is talking to you more than she needs to, that's a signal. If she's looking at you more than necessary, that's a signal. If she is talking about you amongst mutual peers, that's a signal. I mean, she's thinking about you. If she's looking at you, um, if she is talking, smiling, listening, or even appearing in your proximity more than necessary, these are all signals. True. That being said, however, the problem with signals is that Western women are overtly evil and malicious. Sometimes, if they are sufficiently damaged psychologically, they might want to pay the pain forward. Sure. Any of these signals should be interpreted from them as a threat to your overall safety, as they use these signals to lure males into traps, harmful scenarios, firings, and all manners of cruelty towards men. Um, so, that being said, I would say, honestly... Again, head on the swivel. If these signals are obvious, Emperor Dion, if they are obvious, then you should equally be able to figure out if their intents are genuine or malicious. Right? But Femcell to Feminine says, there are women who watch Peach Channel and consume Red Pill, Black Pill, PUA, and general manosphere content. Leslie says, a guy with as much riz as Pete is definitely going to have female fans. Cervantes says, yes, women with more cock... <laughs> than the devil. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Emperor Dion says, watching Manosphere content as a woman is automatically uh, plus a billion suspicion points. Why are you not making one of these men your husband? Again, as I said, Emperor Dion, women are always watching. However, whether or not they are watching to figure out how to subvert and still keep running game on their own stupid bullshit to kind of work around it, for example, watching men's content about body count and therefore saying, oh, I should lie about this more. Something like that. That's obviously bad intentions. Versus coming into a, to a Manosphere channel and learning about femininity and saying, hey, you know, maybe I should be more in touch with my feminine side. That's a more genuine intention. Again, how the fuck do I know? Unless this woman overtly communicates her intent, I have no idea. 
But I guess err on the side of caution, keep your head on a swivel and be mindful of it. And then again, when you see the signs, if they're going in the bad direction, you got to evacuate and get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Leslie says, how would I go about making a YouTuber my husband? I am not sure of the logistics of making that work, but hey, for what it's worth, Pete, Better Bachelor, Rich Cooper, Adam Sosnick, if any of you are interested in signing the government contract, let me know. Sorry, Leslie, that's off the table. Emperor Dian says, interesting how you assumed I was talking about the creators and not the viewers forum users. Cervantes says, do you even know to write properly or you just lost your brain during your birth? God damn, you guys are fucking savages. Satan's bloody anus. The alpha here is Pete. It's his channel, his forum. See, I tend to hold to the adage that if you have to say you're alpha, you're not alpha. Um, it's it's a good it's an interesting terminology to talk about, but when people start throwing on words alpha, beta, sigma, this, that, and the third, don't get me wrong. From an educational context, it makes sense to talk about social dominance hierarchies, like you know, alpha is the top guy, the beta is like usually like the second in command. Then there's gamma, which is kind of more what people refer to when they're talking about betas in like the more broad context. Deltas are kind of average Joes. Omegas are like real bottom of the barrel. And then Sigmas are kind of out here doing their own thing as a lone wolf. That's kind of the more um, academic way to look at it. But generally in the mass sphere, it's like alpha, beta, and that's it. You're either in the haves or the have-nots, and that's the end of it. But I think, honestly, talking about yourself and other people around you that way and trying to assess it, waste of time. Just do you, and again... If you are what Satan's bloody anus <laughs> is saying, then um, then yeah, that will be made apparent in the results that you get. Otherwise, no. Marcus A says, never confuse ignorance with malice. An excellent distinction. The difference between you and them is a chromosome at conception. Not to mention all the horrors of the West are primarily directed at disrupting women. Understanding and learning to trust again may be the only cure if we can find it in time. I agree. But again, you trust doesn't mean you have to trust every single woman. And women, it doesn't mean you have to trust every single man. Um, but again, you have to be open to the possibility of it if you want a long-term relationship. If you don't, then whatever. Fit fingers. Gotta be honest, Petey Chud, bud. This shit's a bit alien to me. It's either that or no bitches be giving this guy fornicate me eyes from a distance. <laughs> Back when I was longing to dish out a schlonging like yourself, signals were difficult to read most times. Every interaction I've had with a purveyor of the great box were just usually driven by circumstances that determine the perfect combination of physical proximity, overall environment, and my ability to not fuck it up by saying stupid shit. Agreed. Social cues are something I've always had a hard time with in general. Eye contact is a big one. Maybe I just got one of them tisms. I don't really mind a little subtlety here and there from the old wacky whammy handbook, but could y'all just put a little more effort and keep your goddamn handkerchiefs in your purses? Fair. Fair. Though probably an incel would turn around and say, hey, listen, maybe the handkerchiefs are in the purses. They're just not get, They're just not dropping them for you, you know? Which is a brutal reality that many of us must face. Joe Raven says, in hindsight, I have missed a lot of choosing signals over the years, but nowadays I'm much better at spotting them. Exactly. This is the normal, normy progression. However, I think there are two factors which muddy the water a bit with regard to some of the topics we discuss in this space. First is that signals will vary from woman to woman. The mechanism is the same, but the way in which that mechanism is deployed is different. I agree. With my observation being that the more loose, high sex sociosexuality a woman is, the more readable her signals will be because she's more accustomed to throwing them out there. Yes. I think this results in a lot of guys ending up with unsuitable women because they miss the signals from the better suited ones. Yes, correct. The other thing is that reading these choosing signals is a skill and one that develops over time. Agreed. It is another thing older, more established men have on their younger counterparts. They pick up signals the younger guys don't. Correct. Which might be a reason, a contributing reason rather, why younger women pair off with older men? Because men are better at understanding womanese, right? But in my own personal experience, even an older man with less resources often does better with the opposite sex than his younger fellows. I think a combination of better ability to read signals and probably having come up in a time before constant online interaction, agreed, therefore not having stunted face-to-face -face social skills as many do today. Agreed, we talked about this. Atomized world, it really fucks with social skill development. 
Marcus says, this seems true for me as well. Men do become more calibrated and attractive towards their later 20s, 30s, in my opinion. This has been my experience as well. Flammutter says, nice question, Pete. My experiences with choosing signals is pretty much right over my head. Even in my heyday, I never knew, and looking back, I missed opportunities to slay some cat. Meow. Granted, they were almost always beneath my SMV, which is why I wasn't so invested. I don't know what it is about me, but I have a body type, and it's all I really go for. When I go for my type, I have tunnel vision. I don't mean to brag, but I got a pretty decent count. In the black community, if you are well-built and can fake thug behavior, your dick will never be dry. Social engineering at play there. Alas, that was before the madness we see ourselves in. I am not going to jump through any dumb hoops I am not accustomed to. The dating middle class is wiped out. The middle class period is on that trajectory. Um, no, I don't know what the fuck you're saying there. Human? Oh, no homo. <laughs> I look at you and I am shocked you can't bag a mid-top Stacy. Shit is crazy. Um, to be honest, I didn't start paying attention to choosing signals till the well ran dry. My research into the crimson pill um, gave me the name for it, choosing signals. Yeah, crimson's kind of like that midpoint between red and black. It's like you're kind of making that transition. But after this was when I discovered something sinister. Women send out choosing signals for validation and a sadistic desire to crush egos of confident men. Um, here's the thing though, but if a man is truly strong, psychologically speaking, it won't work. He's just going to look at that girl like, are you fucking stupid? Like what? <laughs> and just walk away. It's just dumb shenanigans. It doesn't mean anything. It's just words. Who cares? You want to crush the ego? Go ahead. Try. <laughs> but it was never this rampant and it is changing the ecosystem. Guys are updating their firmware and ignoring these signals. See TikTok gym thirst traps. Yep. It's true that there's a desire gap between the sexes, but there is also a necessity gap. True. In a normal environment, they need us more for survival. So call it the survival gap, if you will. But again, with all these oofy-doofy social innovations, those necessities are now taken care of by socially engineered mechanisms, like big daddy government. But I know I have beat this dead, rotten, maggot-infested horse to the max, but an equalizer is coming. A huge necessity gap will be born out of the coming chaos. The desire gap, however, will be small. It will simulate the hell most men are going through now, but for them. I fear things will be so bad we won't even care to enjoy the moment. We will skip over their corpse and continue to struggle for life. Fire Leaves Left says, Notice the similar in traveler backpacker hangouts across the world. Women are just as likely to be flirting to humiliate a guy and faint, but I was just being friendly, you misogynist, as to hook up or find a partner. Just not worth partaking. Yeah. But it's interesting. Remember, though, that women can change their mind at any given time. So, again, I always say feminism is just a system-wide shit test. That's all it is. So if a woman throws out some stupid shit like that and tries to crush your ego, if you pass that shit test with flying colors by not giving a fuck, chances are she's going to move you from the I was just kidding to the Oh, I'm a fuck him camp. Flemutter says backpacker hangouts, you say. Populated by Westerners. Not surprising. I just think for the first time in history, we're exchanging notes. It's like the blonde theory seen from a beautiful mind move. Look it up. Working as a team, but for individual goals. Of course. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Chief Rebel Angel says, I've caught the signals most of the time. There are some instances in which I didn't notice, but I'm okay at reading people. And of course, the more the woman has wanted me to be with me, the more overt the signals and behavior have been. This makes sense. Because again... When a woman is sending out choosing signals, there's always a cost-benefit analysis in her head, right? If the perceived prize is of higher value um, than the risk associated with sending out choosing signals, these choosing signals are going to become more aggressive. They're going to become more aggressive. She's going to ask you to come to her place. Um, she's going to cook for you. She's going to you know, do more direct expressions of, you know, appreciation and desire and gratitude and so on but again if the value isn't really there like it's like yeah kind of there but not really then you're gonna get like some you're gonna get, you're gonna get what you're gonna get you can get some half ass like eh. you know like she just threw out the fishing rod eh. it just it depends but as a guy your job is to assess that you know assess the quality of the choosing signal 
not just the fact that the choosing signal is there. In other words, don't just take any breadcrumbs that are thrown at you. And that's how you avoid the malicious crap that um, Emperor Dion is talking about. Now, Sargo says, Hi, Pete. Hope you're doing okay and enjoying the warmer weather where you are. Sun's out, gun's out. It's cold here in Australia. Your summer is our winter. This I am aware of. Yes. In regards to your question, I find it very hard to tell if a girl is flirting or just being pleasant with me. Yes, we live in a day and age where, you know, flirtation and being nice, we used to be able to distinguish between the two, but now a woman being nice, just to be nice, it's so rare that it's mistaken for flirtation. Yeah. It has a lot to do with the fact that I have diagnosed Asperger's, which Asperger's, autism, these things will impair your social adeptness through no fault of your own. So I understand the handicap implicit in that. Now, I often mistake people being kind for flirting. Exactly. Over the years, I've learned how to interact with women well enough, but reading covert signals isn't happening with me. It's hard. In addition, these days, I feel it's too risky to just spark up a conversation with a woman on the off chance she might like you because she smiled in your direction. We all know the potential consequences of approaching women if you don't pass the basic looks test. You're going to get overt fuck-off signals, probably. Personally, I've been barred from shopping malls and had a restraining order placed against me for nothing more than not passing the basic looks test. Those are extreme examples, I know, but women will be that petty these days. On the more overt side of female choosing signals, I once had a woman when I was 23 walk right up to me at a college party and say she loves big, tall, solid-built, shaved-head men. And after she said that to me, she nervously asked me to make out with her. I was around a 5 out of 10 at the time, shaved bald head because I started losing my hair at 19 years old. And I had a very solid muscular build at the time. And I was 6 foot 1 at the time. I'm just over 6 foot now as I've lost a centimeter or so due to spine compression, due to lifting too heavy in my youth. I just happen to be her exact type and has been the only time in my life I've experienced Chad treatment. I guess this is what Pete means when he talks about dumb luck when you are a normie precisely. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Being in the right place at the right time. Yep. That's it. That being said, I mean, looking at everything that you just said here, unfortunately, especially in the West, it's true. They, they can be very much that petty. It can also work in the opposite direction, though. Let's say a girl wants to fuck you, but you're not very receptive to it and you're not really interested. I have a situation where I knew, um, I heard a story about this guy. He was a doctor, right? During the pandemic, he came to New York. He had to, and he, to help, you know, fast response and all that. Bodies were piling up in the refrigerators and shit, trying to help people out. And um, he didn't have all the paperwork in order necessary to be in New York, but obviously the guy had the credentials to do the fucking job, right? But, you know, paperwork's paperwork, it's, it's fucking stupid. He was working with two women um, who were also in the medical field. One of the two women wanted to fuck him. He wasn't interested in fucking her. And he kind of made it clear, like, you know, look, I'm not looking for that. I'm not interested. The friend of the girl who wanted to fuck him looked up his credentials online, found out he didn't have the license, and reported him. Women do not take rejection well. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. So it can work in the other direction as well. Crazy shit, right? Unbelievable. Just thought I'd share that story with you. Now, Ayatollah of Nofapola says, option one, for better or for worse, I can smell what she's cooking. Do you, jabroni? For anyone who struggles to pick up on choosing signals, I would suggest watching black pill content. Ideally, it will show you images of burning desire, disgust, and meh. Yeah. A woman's facial expression will tell you much. Yeah. It definitely will. Ali Naimna says, The only choosing signals I got which went over the head happened when I was 10 years old or something. Other than that, I never got choosing signals. A lot of times I think I do, but it never turned out to be true. Again, and this is the flawed mechanism in us, men, where we tend to overestimate women's desire in us. And then it gets very socially awkward when we um, act on a faulty signal, if you will. Yeah. 
New Game Plus says, when I was younger, I was pretty oblivious to choosing signals, and I'd say I'm still to some degree. Unfortunately, whatever ground I may have gained by being less oblivious is still lost due to me being far more risk averse now than I was in my naive blue pill days, which in my opinion is actually worse. Agreed. One of the things is this, as a man, um, part of the dating game is taking a risk, a calculated risk, but a risk when interacting with each choosing signals. But again, the older you get, the more stuck in your ways you get, the more risk averse and conservative you get, it gets tougher to take those gambles, right? I tend to err on the side of caution and chalk up most of my friendly and pleasant interactions with women to them just being polite or nice. Maybe they naturally have more of a bubbly or flirtatious personality. Or in the case of more pro-social lines of work, such as baristas, waitresses, bartenders, etc., it's in their best interest to act that way. I would say in those particular professions, it's a safe assumption. Yes. I also have an admittedly self-handicapping rule I follow that I do not ask out cashiers or other women while doing their job because I don't think it's fair since they can't actually really gracefully exit the situation without it being extremely awkward or potentially feel dangerous to them if they're not interested. Correct. Putting people on the spot is something I generally advise against as well. The most oxymoronic thing about me, by far though, is that even if a woman is practically throwing herself at me, if she leads too heavily with overt sexuality without any modesty, it will turn me off completely. You'd think being given a layup like that, why not shoot your shot, right? Worst case scenario, you get laid. But I can tell I descended from and inherited the slow life mating strategy. Combined with aforementioned risk aversion I've acquired through life experience, I don't even know what a woman would need to do to prompt me to ask them out anymore. Well, here's the thing. I think it's okay for a woman to want to jump your bones. That's fine, provided again that you, in terms of the price that you pay isn't a ripoff. What do I mean by that? If other guys got in just for buying her a drink and you need to take her out on five dates to get the same access, like what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Like, give me something, you know? But when you put that to the side, right? If she has an interest to do not just sexual things with you, but non-sexual things with you as well, spend time with you, create memories with you and things like that, that's the kind of stuff you're looking for probably, right? A companion of sorts. Um, so I would say don't just, um, don't just jump away just because a woman wants to do sexual stuff with you. It's okay if she does. But it sounds like, again, you you have a naturally slow progression into that and you want to ease into that. And that's fine, man. There's nothing wrong with playing baseball old school, you know? Start out with a little kissing, work your way up to a little touchy-feely, maybe some dry hump action, you know, get some fellation kind of lingus in there and then you bring it, to, bring it around the home plate. That's kind of how it goes, right? So, I mean, yeah. You're, you're someone that doesn't want to be at home plate on the first day. Then it's like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on here? Um... But you also, on the same token, don't want to be on home plate like three months in when other guys have gotten there on the first date. So it's a slippery slope, which is why transparency is so important in these types of relationships. But uh, Richard Jones replies and says, if she leads too heavily with overt sexuality without any modesty, it will turn me off completely. That happens to me fairly regularly if I'm around a group of them for any length of time consistently. The feeling I get is that it's what I imagine it's like being around street workers. It also happens in bars with much younger women, I'm 50, who seem to launch themselves on me. When I first get to know women, they flirt with me by insinuating that I have, I have a harem of women I go around sticking my D into because of my fit physique. It's very clear that they want to be part of that mythical harem they think I have. And they get rather deflated when I tell them in a gray rock way that I don't do anything with women. I found that women don't want a slow life mating strategy of getting to know a guy start going out on dates, becoming exclusive, then move on to bedroom fun. They want loose situationships with several men and expect them to be having loose situationships with several women. Yes, unfortunately, this is the reality of hookup culture. I am okay with something like an exclusive thing where you're, you're fooling around and stuff and it leads into a relationship. That's kind of like, it's par for the course these days. But, um, Again, this idea where like women have a stable, men have a stable. Unfortunately, if you're a slow life mating strategist who likes one and that's it, you're going to have a hard time. You have to realize that women have no game. All they have is knowledge of how to use their feminine charms to lure men and then turn him into an orbiter. But when it comes to going on a date with them, you soon discover that they have no idea how to act or make prats of themselves that you want the floor to open up in embarrassment. Yeah, pretty much. No social skills whatsoever. 
Emperor Dion, that guy Pete who would quit YouTube if he just went to Japan. Bogdan Pugh, Pete the Punani Ronin, performing seppuku with his katana to all the Asian ladies. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Abstract laser. Most of the time, I think I do understand the signals. Back then, during high school, we had to do a simple music performance in groups. This girl asked me out to practice after class, just the two of us, even though there were other men members. Also, another time, she even asked out to partner up in a group project. But during those times, I had this one-itis for another girl, so every signal I got my way went over my head. So, fellas, keep your eyes peeled and ears open. Or maybe I was wrong and had overestimated her interest. Reminds me of that cartoon Undergrads. The girl Jessie is trying to get Nitz to see her and won't overtly do anything all up until the very last minute they can see each other, at which point she just calls him an idiot and leaves. Yep. So I said it before, I'll say it again. Makes more sense to wait for the choosing signals to come to you and then choose from that than to pursue someone where there is no choosing signals because then you catch this one-itis bullshit because blue pill programming has sort of inclined you to do so. And you end up having nothing to show for it. Just time wasted is pretty much all you have to show. Fem Cell to Feminine says, Hey Pete, Fem Cell to Feminine here, coming in hot with my neurodivergent XX chromosome opinions. I voted for most of the time the signals don't work at all. As a woman on the receiving end, or at least I never noticed them until more recently. Similar to some other contributors commenting here, I failed to recognize overt and covert signals when I was younger. My silly brain wiring takes things so literally and so specifically. When I was between, say, 15 to 26, a guy would have to pull some caveman game, Tarzan game bullshit of, you, my girlfriend, now, me, your boyfriend, for my brain to understand what's happening. That never happened. This aggressive approach style in a feministic, me too sensitive era is higher risk, and I see this as an almost thug max style approach. In theory, if you are a hot bad boy or Tyrone with some street cred or social status, then maybe... You can sometimes get away with this type of, hey, yo, bitch, come here for a second, hollering display of flirtatious, unrefined chest thumping towards some woman. But it doesn't work on most nowadays. It would scare a lot of women off, myself included, if done a certain way. But I digress. I'm getting off topic here. If done a certain way, you mean, depending on the guy who does it. <laughs> Anyways, looking back at my social development and drastically delayed dating history, it is the same scenario. People flirt with you as a teen or young adult, but you're so dense, inexperienced, sheltered, awkward, and ignorant that you don't pick up that they were flirting with you until 10 years later when you are reflecting on your social life. Yep. Women experience these regretful reflections too. And before anyone says anything, no. The guys who were flirting with me back in the day who I didn't perceive weren't invisible due to low looks or low social status. In fact, some of the more popular guys in high school were flirting with me, but I never realized it or perceived it until many years later down the line. What a brutal realization. Damn it, Pete, I could have been Chad Light or Brad Light's girlfriend when I was 16 or 17. I have to laugh at my past self and her book smarts, but lack of social smarts and flirting smarts. Relatable. A guy could sit beside me, express interest in my hobbies and likes, claim to have those same likes and hobbies, strike up conversations in the hallways, call me nicknames, try to finesse asking for my email or number, spend or invest a certain amount of time with me, and my socially dull, repressed, undiagnosed brain at the time never perceived these things as potentially romantic or sexual. Yep, it sounds like there's some social impairment here. I had the awfully dismissive sounding, oh, he's just being nice mentality that many men cringe to hear and experience as a friend zone rejection. Meanwhile, I genuinely would believe he is just being platonically civil and friendly, even if he is somewhat conventionally attractive. So no, this wasn't me rejecting invisible men in some cases. Chad could flirt with me back then, and I would still be a lost, doe-eyed dummy. So fellas, I have talked about this in the past. Neurodivergent women. Rare, not common, but neurodivergent women, a little bit different than neurotypical women, um might be more prone to communicate overtly. So if like as a guy, overt communication uh, is like a necessity for a relationship to be functional for you, like you just, you can't pick up on the signals. A neurodivergent woman, a neurodivergent woman rather, isn't the worst thing to entertain. But as you can see by Fem Cell to Feminine explaining her uh, situation here, uh, even from her end, it can be pretty difficult to communicate. And a lot of missed opportunities arise as a result. Now, I realize there are different reasons why this obliviousness happens. Lack of social and emotional competencies. Yes. 
lack of proper feminine socialization. No one taught me about flirting, dating, etc. If I recall, you said you had like a real boss babe mom. So of course, she's kind of giving you the masculine lens, which is why your behavior is a little bit more masculine in terms of how you understand the world, perhaps. Though, obviously, the fact that you share genetics with your mom obviously plays a role. Yeah. But uh, this is very much a social skill set that is often self-taught, learned through experience, missed opportunities, and sometimes mentoring or coaching. I have been using both Manosphere, PUA content, and women's femininity and dating coaches to improve my socio-emotional aptitude and be more confident. I just repeatedly failed to understand these dynamics and basically ended up sabotaging my trajectory even more. There's a lot of self-sabotage amongst men as well. It is very much a teen love pill scenario where I never got to experience the so-called starter partner package on a conventional normie timeline. I might get my first real boyfriend and perhaps later eventual husband at almost 30. You probably will have an easier time than a man your age. So that's a silver lining. But now that I am more informed, self-aware, and socially aware, I am becoming one of those women that men may have the wrong assumptions about because of my increasing bluntness and straightforwardness. I have no time to spare nor waste, despite the stigma around women making overt approaches or being too direct. She's aware of the biological clock. That's good. I make my choosing signals and indicators of interest very obvious. I am pushing beyond old comfort zones and trying to maximize what's left in my 20s as best as I can. Fair. For the first time in my life, I directly asked the guy I was flirting with for his number. Number secured, by the way. But I have no text game, and everything is back to being awkward now. I don't think the be yourself advice works for some women either. So I want to be careful and more strategic with what I say and how I say it. Another part of my brain functioning, overthinking, relatable. Despite being a woman, if it wasn't for spaces like this, I would still be stuck in the dark, fumbling around, not understanding gender and dating psychologies. Well, I'm glad that this channel does help you in some regard, because again, one of the purposes of this channel is to kind of help women get some perspective on how men think. And it sounds like your thinking is very similar to male thinking relative to your neurotypical female peers. So what I would say is that for the whole texting thing, as long as you don't say anything that's like just fucking outright weird, you're probably going to be okay. You know, obviously there's like, there's weird shit a woman can say that's going to make a guy go, what the fuck? But um, it's much more difficult to... I guess, fuck up when it's a girl talking to a guy than the other way around. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Obviously, be mindful of what you say, yes. But um, the most important thing, I think, with those conversations is um, take it light, you know, have fun with it. That's always what it is, you know. Keep the conversations engaging and entertaining. Don't, don't treat it like a chore. Easier said than done, I know, but yeah. If you're with the right guy, it should come a little more naturally. Now, Leslie says, that was so much fun to read. The only part that raised any concerns was you're referring to yourself as almost 30 rather than late 20s. You might ask yourself, aren't they the same? So, not quite, but yes. The former suggests that you were up against some sort of deadline, whereas the latter is more relaxed. Are you running out of time? Well, technically, yes, biologically speaking, since we are all getting closer and closer to meeting father time. Yes. My concern is that I have found that I haven't made the best decisions in any area of life, when I made a decision thinking I was running out of time. With that being said, thanks again for a delightful post. Correct. So obviously, do not make a decision out of desperation is what Leslie is saying here. And that's true. Because if you make a decision out of desperation, you're in a position where, again, you might regret it. And regret is a terrible foundation for a relationship. Satan's bloody anus. You Aspies are adorable. Fem South the Feminine says, at least I'm adorable. Mark Assay says, that was insightful. Thanks for the post. You mentioned you look back at not being someone's girlfriend when much younger with some regret. Do you think you would have a better outcome in life if that was the case, knowing who you were at the time? Obviously, the truth is no. It probably would not have made a difference in retrospect. I don't think like ex relationships I had when I was younger really made a difference in my outcomes in retrospect. Leslie said, good point. When I read the part about could have been Chad Light or Brad Light's girlfriend in high school. I was thinking, yeah, and who knows? You might now be alpha widowed if that had been the case. Exactly. That's another thing to consider. But no point thinking about what could have been when that time you can't get it back. But Fem to Feminine says, it's difficult to say. Everything is a domino effect of causality. Correct. And since I am a free will skeptic, on some level, things happened the way they were meant to happen. With my genetics, emotionally traumatic upbringing, and a role-reversed two-parent household of religious narcissists, 
being bullied for years on end in my childhood and early teens, some undiagnosed mental health conditions, and an environmental and political socialization soup mix that all merged together to make me who I am. I was bound to be in the position I am now. Yep. In an alternate timeline, perhaps my overly caring parents weren't so strict, instead permitting me more social freedom and personal freedom. Perhaps these social freedoms would have enabled me to date as a tween or teen, socialize and hang out with less restraint, go to school dances, student parties, and prom like most of my high school peers. Though it could have easily also gone off the deep end and you would have racked up a body count, which made you not marketable for an LTR. Maybe if I had better feminine role models and better example of masculinity, I would have recognized certain social and sexual dynamics in the mating and dating game a lot better and a lot earlier on. My reference point for romance was based on the impressionable young girls, my female student peers, who had these literotica fanfiction fantasies of bad boy brooding vampire and werewolf chads seducing them. It was the era of supernatural ya fiction and giggling over popular Hollywood male celebs, fictional pretty boys and anime abs, a dark time for many. Most girls probably have a copy of Fifty Shades of Grey somewhere, so yeah. Everything is circumstances and coincidence built on top of each other. I rarely entertain the should've, would've, could've hypothetical thought experiments or painful, regretful what-ifs. No point. No point. I realize I am dying every day, and if plan to secure any notable experience with a decent quality male partner, the time is likely now. Correct. I've gone through the stages of red pill rage and sewer fuel that many men in these spaces go through. Some so-called femcell experiences parallel the experiences of so-called incels and black-pilled men, with key differences that I do acknowledge. I went through every single stage of the emotional roller coaster as I began to wake up to how messed up the world is, and I am. This is both personal and political for me in every way. It is deeply philosophical and cannot be unseen. I went through it all. Severe rage, suicidal depression, rotting in my room, feelings of deep loss, grieving and mourning the life I wish I had or could have had, resenting the Chads and Stacys, embittered by the pretty normie girls whose lives seem to be much easier due to a combination of class privilege, health, and neurotypicality, and looks privilege. Some women do go through these phases and stages. Femcell servers and forums exist for this very same reason, where the girlies cry in rage that they'll never be Stacy and soak in misery, and that they'll never be pretty enough, high value enough, neurotypical enough, able enough, or healthy enough for the chads that they want. Yes. Some folks cope by believing that their strict upbringing and disorders protected them from making certain mistakes. To be fair, they did. Could have just as easily been a fucking streetwalker with a body count of 50, had the circumstances been different. We, the awkward, sheltered, disordered women who never got the guy, also have never gotten pregnant, then abandoned, and are STD-free. We aren't pump and dump victims. We aren't teen moms. These are good things. Sure, there's probably a multiverse timeline somewhere where I end up another unwed teen mom statistic or a body count over 25 by the time I turn 25. There's probably an alternate timeline where I have a lot of sexual trauma instead of religious trauma and emotional damage. If I ended up in a healthy, hot, and heavy relationship earlier on, say when I was 16 to 18, and went through the motions of learning and growing from it, like most normies seem to when their starter boyfriend-girlfriend relationship fails, which it usually does, I wouldn't feel as rushed as I do now. Probably. The good thing about having a conventional relationship trajectory is things fall into place according to the developmental stage you're at, and it's associated with wants or needs. The idea of my very first boyfriend being my husband alarmed me at first and seemed like a giant leap without any steps in between. Yet it used to be the norm. Now I am slowly growing to accept that this may very well be my reality. And aside from the fact as a female, if you're a virgin, men are okay with that generally, if they are on a slow life mating strategy and they're willing to teach you. Now I am slowly growing to accept it. Some of you may say no hymen, no diamond, so my post 25 years young virgin status might make me stand out in a crowd of what some might label in the space used or ran through roasties. It does make you stand out. On the other hand, I have disclosed in previous comments the overwhelming negative reactions I get from moids. I have to poke fun for not having swiped my V-card. So here's the thing. Um, those are fast life mating strategists. They're not interested in a relationship. So you dodge the bullet. Would it have been nice going to prom and getting a sweet aesthetic prom proposal moment? Maybe, probably. Would the lovey-dovey cuddling moments and cutesy romantic ya yeah, novel type bullshit associated with teen love or being high school sweethearts be a fond memory to reflect on? Yeah, sure, why not? But it never happened and I'm getting too old to drown in these what-if fantasies. Correct. 
My life could have been different, but I can only show up as I am for whoever wants me, weirdness included. Thanks for asking. Hope I answered your question somewhere in this spiel. Thanks for sharing your experience. Sounds very similar to what nearly 80% of straight men experience these days. Yep. So as you can see, fellas, there are some women who have lived it. Again, rare as they are, they exist. Marcus says, another great post. You definitely hit the nail on the head and perhaps a bit too close to home. Your description of waking up and all that entails was dead on. I know that feel. I came roughly to the same conclusion. Though I'd say a sober what-if scenario or two can be illuminating as an experiment, mostly for my hypothetical future children. I do love my (laughs) sci-fi. As someone who has been in at least that ballpark, I'll say that I found two things that got me much closer to where I needed to be. Both are really just thought experiments as above. I started to think of my past self as a separate entity that passed me the baton in a relay race. I have it now and must move forward to pass it off to my future self and eventually my children, who in all likelihood will never understand how they existed, was the fruit of this very race. My past self should be thanked for surviving that minefield so I don't need to. I need to set the stage for future self to do the most possible. God knows I have a hard time acknowledging that I did well under the circumstances and didn't fall to weakness or vice like so many around me. So I can't forgive. So if I can't forgive myself, I can thank the younger me, which takes a massive weight off. I could thank them. As much as we may think this is all, this all actually fucking matters, it doesn't. But it definitely also does. So it doesn't matter in the context that we're all going to die someday, but it does in the sense that genetically you are mostly erased inside three generations, but you have within that window to obviously do something that matters. I don't remember my great-grandparents. People will be created through genetic modification, horrific future wars. None of your deeds had any impact on anything or anyone. Heat, death of the universe, blah, blah, blah. Also, butterflies exist, though. How the fuck is that even a thing? That should be impossible, much like everything else we know as we experience it in our disgusting meat suits. All this is absurd, sure. Probably as absurd as the conversations here. That in mind, you can't forget to laugh at it all. Consciousness as the universe experiencing itself. Star stuff and all that jazz. Shout out to Carl Sagan. I could just poop in a urinal and not even think about it. There is no small number of people that think vehicle speed is important while they live in a city with speed limits. We selectively bred wolves into affectionate miniature dogs to cuddle. I could literally buy 10 of them and spend the rest of my life surrounded by maximum cute. If the goal of having children is so that they can experience the world, perhaps a better world than I know, then you'd think that was the idea when someone made me. Point is, this kind of enjoyment is free of charge. The best thing in life ever and most attractive thing possible. Would you rather that or I sit across from you on a date thinking and worrying about how it's over and I'm terribly insufficient? At the end of the day, you're going to do what you intend to do. Yes, this is all very serious, but a chuckle here and there will change everything. Don't take life so seriously. None of us get out of it alive anyway, basically. That was a very good exchange, so thank you for sharing Fem Sal to Feminine. Okay. All right, we still got quite a bit left, so let's keep on keeping on. Erink Argamax says, Growing up, I did not have a role model that would help me navigate through the social jungle, so I usually tried to figure things out myself, as most guys do, unconsciously relying on the attachment patterns familiar to me from home. Yes. This did not work out very well and made me increasingly desperate to the point of collecting enough negative experiences that I deemed the female presence against me and threat to my vulnerabilities. After experiencing both phases, I came across the pill concepts and started the process of slowly swallowing. It was only when I informed myself enough about the mating games people play that I discovered past interests ranging from subtle to quite obvious. Correct. You see it with new eyes. Now this hit me hard because I noticed just how many opportunities I have irreversibly missed. Mm -hmm. But there's no point dwelling. On the bright side though, I try to use this as a counter-argument to my negative self-perception, especially when it comes to being a valuable romantic prospect. I think that if you were properly guided in your early developmental phase with your social interactions and had healthy first experiences with conscious lessons to learn, it's very likely to respond to the signals later, consciously or subconsciously. And if you had a red-pilled friendly uncle being a positive masculine figure explaining you the subtle art of mating, you probably thrived, given that the rest of the stars were also aligned. Correct. Luck is always going to play a role in everything that we are discussing here. However, that being said, having the masculine role model in your life as a man will definitely aid you. Yes. Marcus A says, I know this feel. I've taken positives from it all too. If I knew these things when I was younger, I'd likely be paying child support for the next decade. Mm Mm-hmm. Probably. So count your blessings. 
Visnock says, I have also thought a lot about where I'd be if only I had proper guidance from the beginning. What's sad is that everything I've learned from the manosphere is something 14-year-old me could easily have understood. If only I was given the information. You wouldn't even struggle to have my full attention because already then I had seen enough to know I was fed lies by Disney and parents. Not for a single second did I believe it when my parents harped on that, oh, girls will be all over you, Visnock. They probably believed what they were saying, though. Their Boomerville ignorance about the world was allowed to mold and fester by the fact we lived on a farm which became their closed ecosystem, where nobody could tell them what's what, except state television, of course, which they sat and watched on separate floors every day. Telling your child that something will work out effortlessly is a great way of raising the barrier for the child to ask for help when struggling. Sets them up for failure. It's a travesty that so many of us need to come here to have these conversations with anyone at all when they should have been openly and honestly around the family dinner table. Agreed. Yep. You got to have someone keep it 100 with you. Your family's got to tell you, like, look, man, when you get out there, most people aren't going to give a fuck about you. We care, but out there, not so much. You're going to have a hard time. You're going to struggle. But if you persevere, you might get something. No guarantees, though. That's more real than the bullshit people feed you. That's definitely a good consolidation reflecting the good and everything. Agreed. I think there is a thin line between being positive about one's fortune and abandoning responsibility in favor of it. I believe a healthy balance is necessary in order to push forward in a sustainable manner without burning out. This is also the spectrum for the locus of control. Correct. You have to know the difference between internal and external. Internal is basically what you have control over. External, you don't. So forget all that and focus on what you do have control over so that you don't burn out. I agree. In my own family, I didn't even have any positive support at all. It was mostly none of it in either way. Emotionally absent father, and I felt like my mother was enjoying the control I gave her whenever I mentioned my romantic struggles. My grandfather was fun and kind man. He'd tell me that I'm handsome, and he's sure I break a lot of hearts. This is a kind of blind confidence one needs to have an overall positive attitude, but it needs to be supplemented by actual work. Correct. When your repeated negative experience doesn't match the positive expectations of your parental figures, it's even worse and quite jarring. Yes. Because now you feel inadequate for not realizing the potential and the resources you were quote unquote blessed with. This is where the toxic shame and trauma response plays along. Yep. Regarding the guidance, I think I wasn't even ready to sense this domain as a certain frequency of life for a long, long while. I thought what mattered was merely your feelings. The usual blue pill stuff, I guess. Funny how it's a universal teaching without ever being called out anywhere. The fact that mating is a game occurred to me much later. Yes, sir. It's match game. Five Leaves Left says, I've spent a lot of time in traveler, backpacker hostels throughout the years. And in the modern world after feminism and Me Too has poisoned the well, Flirting, friendliness, and choosing signals are all interchangeable and subject to reframing and post-rationalization depending on the girl's mood. Levels of narcissism, manipulative tendencies, and social local pressure. I've said it many times. There's many reasons why a girl might change her mind because her girlfriend's told her to, because now she thinks you're not worth as much as she thought you were worth, or just because of her hormones. A girl can change her mind at any time, from choosing signals to fuck-off signals to being with you to not being with you. As a man, you have to be prepared for that. If she wants to frame it as inappropriate, harassing sexism, she can, and the guy doesn't have a leg to stand on. What's he going to say? But, but, you were playing with your hair, so you were clearly giving me choosing signals. Yeah, right. Women love being in the position of being able to choose whether to bang you, humiliate you, or get you into a social or legal trouble. It's a position of complete power. That it is. So women always like to talk about how like, when they get in the bed with men, it puts them in a very vulnerable position, and they're not going to do that with just anybody, uh, even though they'll break the rules for Chad. But um, what women have to understand is that when men act upon a perceived choosing signal, given all the social innovations like the legal system and stuff, men are putting themselves in a vulnerable position too. It's a risk. And that's why a lot of men, even if they do see your choosing signals, they might not act on them. So it's just as important for a man to make you... Just as it's important for a man to make you feel safe and comfortable before you have sex with him, you have to make him feel like his advances are welcomed before he'll really press on that. You know what I mean? Krellian says, unless you are really dense, women make it very obvious when they are actually interested in a guy. If you think choosing signals are going over your head, chances are you aren't getting any. That's fair. 
I also partially disagree on the desire gap. I think women want men just as bad. They want Chads just as bad. They want Brads and Harrys just as bad. But they only have a burning desire for a very small percentage of men, the men I just outlined. This is misconstrued as them having a lower sex drive. For the average man, absolutely. Spend time around most single women and you'll realize they are absolutely obsessed with attractive guys. Sure. Spot on with the sex drive. Girls I've been with and snooping through their phones, literally 90% of girl group chat talk and talk of their besties is about tall, hot guys. Sending TikToks of them, taking pics of them in real life, talking about how they need something fixed in their house and wanting a tall, hot guy to come fix it and you know what? Their life revolves around Chad. Plus, the girls I've been with always wanted to bang quite a bit. Sometimes I couldn't even keep up. They most definitely have high sex drive than what is purported around in Red and Black Pill Sphere. So, to clarify, and I did clarify when I gave the original post, on average, rule one on this channel, no absolutes, none. But on average, general rule, what we examine, neurotypical normie guys, neurotypical normie girls. On average, these guys want to bang these girls more than these girls want to bang these guys. Yes, go to the tails of the distribution, things become more pronounced, that's what you're talking about. Great. Krellian replies and says, yep, pick up any woman's magazine. Every article is about how to attract Chad. Right tail of the distribution and looks maxing tips to try to close the gap between your SMV and his. Yes. There are many women whose entire existence revolves around looking good so they can hopefully pull Chad. Yep. That's literally their entire life. At least most men have hobbies. Pretty much. It's actually kind of crazy how hollow they are and have zero substance. I really question if they even have original thoughts or any thoughts outside of just living through their emotions and chat chasing instincts. Hive mind, conformity, things like this. Yes, which is why, ladies, this is another thing. Why do you get pushed aside as STR material when you want to be LTR? You have no substance. And Krellian says, not all women, but an increasing amount do seem like this. As with most societal ills, social media is no doubt the culprit. Plays, it plays right onto the female hive mind. Yes. Real names not given says, I'm a guy. Most of the time it goes over my head. I usually figure it out five to 10 minutes after the interaction. Slow processor. In general, I could pick up on some things, but it's very hit and miss. Smile while walking past, positive. Woman walking into com oncoming traffic to get away from me, negative. People are fickle. I value the positive interactions with women because they are very few. True. Women might be polite to you, they might be platonic and friendly to you, but the ones where they express a positive romantic indicator to you are rare. So when you do get them, you tend to appreciate them more as men. Which is why I always like to say that, you know, women have to really desire you and want you kind of more than you want them, out of the gate at least. Because men, because getting that positive affirmation is so rare, men could turn around and come to appreciate the woman and close the gap in desire. While usually in the other direction, women don't, like, it's either there or it's not. If it's not there, no fucking point. Don't even try to negotiate it. It's a waste of fucking time. Does that mean it's impossible for a woman to be in a position where she can't negotiate with a man? Of course not. But what I'm trying to say is that if a man generally doesn't get positive female attention in the romantic context, he's more likely to come around and close the desire gap than the other way around um, when we're talking about who likes who more. River B says, in my own blunt opinion, I have a Chad tear face. That's good. And I realize how cringe it is for me to make a claim like this. It's not, if it's true. I'm just basing it off the reactions I tend to get from women. Fairly decent data. However, I am a late bloomer. I think I have a good idea of what life is like for men with normie tear faces. Right. In my opinion, if you're a Chad, then it's very easy to notice choosing signals. Because they make it obvious. Really, it's the exact same thing that happens for guys when they see a hot girl, but in reverse, taking involuntary glances, etc. Same goes for body language. What typically happens when a guy is in the presence of a super hot chick, he starts perspirating, he gets really nervous, he avoids eye contact, etc. It's the same for girls when they're in the presence of Chad. Speaking of, that's the one claim I constantly see in these spaces that I strongly disagree with. If she likes you, she'll maintain eye contact with you. Or if she chooses you, she'll maintain eye contact. No, even if she overtly approaches you first, she'll be incapable of maintaining eye contact with you. Depends on the girl. I would say probably older women, probably like, you know, later 20s, early 30s, probably have an easier time with that shit. 
Um, but the younger girls, I did mention it in parentheses. I said it because I knew a comment like yours was coming. This is a part of being a ruminating overthinker. I, I perceive these responses before they happen. Is yes, the shy girls, they'll they'll look at their feet on the ground and they'll be blushing and shit, laughing nervously, but like in a like a flattery type context. Yeah, that happens all the time. Of course. Not saying it doesn't. But obviously women that are more like late 20s, early 30s, they might be a little more confident in um, communication and stuff like this, so they'll do this. But women aren't used to approaching guys. This is true. But they'll only break that rule for a handful of guys. This is also true. It will have taken all the courage she can muster just to approach you at all because she understands intuitively the social disapproval that comes with rejection. And it's very risky, evolutionarily speaking. To be honest, when I look back at my life, I can remember that it also took me a long time before I was able to gain the confidence to look people in the eyes. So I definitely get what girls are coming from on this. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Braveheart. Hey, Pete. I chose one, but with some caveats. In my experience, a girl will make it very obvious if she likes you romantically or not, but each choosing signal was different for me. From wanting to be as close to me as much as possible, to physical touching, to approaching me and asking for my Snapchat, to complimenting on my looks... And by complimenting, I'm not talking about saying how good my hair looks, but by telling me how cute I look. There was this one girl in high school who had her friend tell me that she likes me romantically. That's the second time we've talked about intermediary here. Hell, there was this one time in the high school cafeteria where I was sitting with a group of girls. I got up to take off my sweater, and as I was doing so, I heard one of the girls whisper, Oh my god, look at his abs. Now, I made sure not to show off the goodies as I keep my shirt underneath down. And the moment that I took off my sweater, I heard her quickly say, Damn it. Now, despite all of this, there were still times where I did overestimate if a girl liked me, but that was only when I liked her and she didn't like me. But when the opposite happened where a girl liked me and I didn't like her back, I could tell within an instant. Correct, because you hold the cards. Finn Golfin says, Hi Pete, thank you for making this. You're welcome. While my journey to the black pill began a few years ago when I started my weight loss journey, I was morbidly obese and been fat my entire life. So when I started to lose some fat, I noticed a lot of weird behavior from the opposite sex. Tried to ask my mom and sister what the fuck was going on, but they couldn't figure it out, or jokingly said maybe they like you. Quick Google search later, I found the term looking signals. It didn't explain most of my experience, so I had to find out more info. A few articles later, found a YouTube video of some Red Pill PUA video explaining choosing signals. But again, it didn't explain all I was seeing. The algo got me to wheat waffles, and then I found the black pill. After getting more info on that, I finally found my missing link. You see some of my experiences could have been choosing signals, but most of the other times, it was just me getting the human treatment instead of subhuman. I believe that most of the choosing signals are subconscious, and that our bodies just react in weird ways when there are pretty people around. Few times I have done some simpish behavior, I didn't think, oh yeah, let me do this so she liked me more. It was just purely automatic, and afterwards I was left wondering why the hell I did that for. Like, the girl wasn't even my type, she's just hot. Most of the choosing signals I get are, are from sub-5 women that I have no interest in. Like, maybe if they actually did more than stare at me or follow me around to see if I noticed them, maybe it would give me a chance, but nah. The worst reaction is when a girl is so nervous her whole face is shaking with fear, literally. But maybe I'm a really scary guy because of my 6'2 height and big frame. Well anyways, thanks again, Pete, for making this video. Sure. And honestly, you know, it could be any number of reasons. If you fail the looks test, of course, you're going to get more of the latter reaction you're talking about. But if you um, if you don't fail and you pass, then yeah. But of course, what types of girls will give you choosing signals is to, in direct proportion to where you are on the looks scale. Yes. City Boy says, I get and see the signals, but getting one isn't a guarantee. Top three signals personally are any glance longer than a second. Bonus points if she moves her hair out of the way. Intentional proximity. Initiating combo with a stupid question. Yep. You have no idea how many times I've seen the glance and hair thing in the subway. Always makes me wonder if she is checking me out. Probably. There's only one way to find out, though, and that's to decide if you want to pull the trigger on the signal. Alexander B. says, In my early 30s, when I was younger and interested in women, I would never see them. Never. Sometimes I think back and cringe. Now I'm older and don't care for them. At this age, the good ones are taken, and what's left is disappointing, to say the least. And I believe that I too am the same in their eyes, as I'm no Chad. They say men hit the middle age crisis around 40 to 50, while women hit it at 25 to 30. It's when the insanity apparently sparks in them. 
The amount of weirdos that yap and yap about natural things as if not all things are part of nature. Yes, plastics too, diets, spirituality, drugs, and particularly psychedelics, energies, crystals, special waters, shamanism, and my pet peeve, traveling. It's insane. I'm in a very good and comfortable place in my life, and thus I've started loving like a woman, pragmatically with the what can you do for me mentality, and I find most single women my age wanting. Why would I destroy my comfy and opulent equilibrium for you? Fair. Essential oils. <laughs> oh, and rocks. Mind, she turned out to be very good in the sack, so I was prepared to overlook that. <laughs> <laughs> things definitely change when you hit the 30s as a man. You see things differently. For sure. Jericho says, hello, Pete. I hope you're doing well. Same to you. I've had mixed results when it comes to reading hints. Selected the second option. I would tend to just ask them out if I felt it on the spot and then wait for the response. If there's none or I don't see it, I moved on. I'm sure I would have had more success if I waited a bit longer for a result or a hint. But barring a severe case of one-itis, I tended to get bored sooner and sooner as I got older. Plus, as a bit of an analogy, since the process of getting into a relationship is starting to look like a job hunt, if you've spent any amount of time and energy getting through hundreds of applications for a job, the nah, I'm good jumps to mind really fast when the prospect of starting it all again comes up in the relationship context. The emergence of ghosting and its prevalence today seems to have made the female subtle hint strategy woefully maladaptive in this new environment, in the sea of ghosting. Some maybe, maybe not gets rapidly understood as a no since the potential loss of time in previous bad experiences with ghosting incentivizes avoidance behaviors, becoming tired of reading the room. The only potential balancing factor would be an equal or higher horniness, which carries its own set of problems in generating inappropriate behaviors from men. These are all excellent points. Ghosting in general, I think definitely makes women more risk averse, which is fair. Um, and now we're starting to see an increase in women ghosting men too. So it's like, okay, that makes men even more um, risk averse. But the negative Matthew effect loops that are coming into play as a result of this shitty dynamic, again, is just feeding into that increasingly atomized world where people are just sort of shutting down and shutting in. Satan's bloody anus, back at it again. Years ago at a restaurant in Allentown, PA, my loner self was parked at a table when I noticed an elderly couple coming in. Old man in a wheelchair, I immediately got up and said they could have my table. Even chatted them up for a bit before I moved. Old man wasn't exactly as grateful as I thought he should be, but his wife seemed to be the brains. Meanwhile, I had caught the attention of a tall, professional-looking Latina in line. Pretty hot, too. She purposely gave me a broad smile with eye contact as she walked out. I was face frozen and didn't return smile. If anything, I looked away. I mean, I didn't have to chase her down, but I felt bad that in the moment I froze. Should have at least returned an easy smile, telepathically letting her know I'm a good guy, you're a good gal. A moment, I dropped the ball. See, ladies, this is the situation. When, when a man is not used to that positive affirmation, sometimes they don't know what to do with it. So you're sitting over here like, wow, he's socially retarded. But it's just like, he just doesn't know what to do with it. And it's not really his fault. He probably is a decent human being. It's just that, again, you'll never know that. Again, and this is a flaw in covert communication. There's some overt stuff that could really, you know, shift the landscape that you'll never know about because of the limitations of covert communication. But in contrast, several months ago getting COVID boosters, I strike up a convo with HR lady because I noticed she had huge gazongas. Nothing draws a guy in like boobs, right? I was asking about jobs, but probably just an excuse to talk. So she's very extroverted and standing close in my space. Not my type, but this was a purely sexual pursuit under the guise of job hunting. However, her face was so clown painted, I felt revulsion. She probably even liked me, but now I couldn't wait to split. Acted like I'm coming back someday to fill out paperwork, but hell no. Without exaggeration, she was a Pennywise the Clown up close. Ladies overdoing the makeup. No good. No bueno. Leslie replies, I was only able to read up to Allentown, uh, and now the Billy Joel song is blaring in my head, closing all the factories down, or my father fought the Second World War and spent their evenings on the Jersey Shore. A-Town ain't no place to be. A-Town ain't no place to be. I just had a moment with a gal that approved of me. Never went back. Satan's bloody ass again replies, My nan and my pop met at Bethlehem Steel after the war. Worked their bodies ragged. Pop died on Christmas Day. Nan just checked in an old folks home at 98. 
worked until 2020. I always give respect to the elderly when I'm about. Yeah. Cool story. They sound like exact people that the song was written about. Okay. We have a few comments left. And then we could wrap up, but they're going to be some long comments. So let's go through them. Marcus says, hey, Pete, this is a pretty important one. There is no fire without spark. Agreed. I look back to when I was in grade 6 to 12 and shake my head a bit. I've come to terms with my failures and why they occurred. I never had a father to teach me this stuff, and my home life was a bad time. Yeah, that'll fuck you up. Looking back, I had a ton of choosing signals sent my way, but I had no idea what to do about it. Very much like the other one where he just kind of froze. You don't know what to do when positive affirmation in the romantic context or even casual sexual context is being thrown your way as a guy because you're not accustomed to it. And on top of that, you got social engineering and blue pill programming that's kind of conditioning this out of you. So it just kind of impairs your socialization. And that then you have social media and stuff on like this on top of that with the atomization and stuff. It really puts you at a disadvantage. But perhaps more importantly, I didn't think I was worthy of the pursuit. This is another thing. Fellas underestimate their own self-worth. And as a result of that, yeah. I acted on them perhaps once, which was with the worst person possible, which set me even further back, validating my self-hatred. I finally got my shit together at around 30. Very common for men. Understanding the bigger picture. So these signals would go right over my head initially. Then once I picked up on it, I would get it a few minutes later, a few minutes late, if you feel me. I found that if I was looking for something covert, I probably would have less success than if I just walked into a room, immediately looked for eye contact with any attractive girls, and then assumed they were interested. I make sure to talk to these girls, and if they make it easy and fun, we're in business. Not the worst approach. Assuming that a girl is interested is the best strategy, as we evolve to be. You don't need to go 11 out of 10. Just go by basic rules. If she turns away, replies with one word, or attempts to get physical distance, she isn't interested. Conversely, if she stays in the interaction, even if a bit cold initially, or asks anything about you, she wants you. Watch the eyes and go from there. Who gives a damn if she's just looking for a bit of attention? Use these girls to improve your social game and slay the fear of approach so you win, even if she isn't interested. You could be straight to the point so your time isn't wasted as well. After even a minute of talking to her, ask for her the number because I have something to do, but I'd love to talk to you more. You did your job. The ball is now in her court. Nothing was lost. Keep moving forward with your day. I think back to high school and how if I had a mentor, it would have dramatically changed my trajectory. Genetically, I look pretty good. I had just started to work out, but my self-confidence was awful. I now know how many good characteristics I possess after many years learning and wonder what my alternate dimension self would look like. What could I have said to my younger self so he would understand the fastest? This thought does cross my mind very often. My problems at the time were of knowledge and technique, yes. I think, however, the main weakness I had was self-confidence, as many men do. You see that winning masculinity in a lot of young, decently adjusted men. We in our 30s shake our heads at these boys, all of us remembering how brash and foolish we were at times, how some 20-year-old is going to try and tell you how the world works after just having learned to tie his shoes. That is the point, though. That overconfidence and mental point of origin. The instinct to rebel and create one's own reality. As misplaced as it is, the attitude is the attractive part because he's willing to take risks. And a young girl is even less likely to understand that this cardboard cutout confidence isn't at all real. So it becomes effective because it causes initiative. To know that the difference between how could I possibly deserve that to how can I get that because I want it takes some time for those who got smushed when younger and isn't solved by a single aphorism. Very true. Yes, because you're going to learn in this life that very few people get what they deserve. So don't worry about what you do or do not deserve. Just think about what you actually want out of this life and move according to that. I do wonder how my life would look if things were different. I'd have spent less time learning these things because there would be no reason to, which likely would have made me very vulnerable to attack. Though the confidence boost would have made me more outgoing, Matthew effect in the positive direction, and more likely to take risks I can handle, thus pushing me very far in another direction. Necessity is the best driver, though. I look back at that poor young man I was with compassion and gratitude, knowing he had to suffer through a lot for my current self's sake. But also his demons are my mortal enemies, which seems to me to be a drive like no other. 
slaying demons, of course. Erink replies and says, well said. It is heartbreaking to reframe that overconfidence as a reasonable step in a healthy masculinity after having applied projection towards people that possess it and judge their behavior with negative connotations is a bitter realization to say the least. Meanwhile, you think you possess all the qualities and the humility, and you think this will make the girls love you so much more than others because you are oh so special. At least this was pretty much the helpless situation I was in. That overconfidence is perceived as neurotypicality, right? In a way. Um, so the people that are a little more sage and um, reflective and they have some sort of humility, um, so appreciation for such things does not come until much later. When a person has suffered from early stage trauma, such as repeated maternal rejection, even the seemingly simple step of assuming that a girl is interested can be clouded by the rejection sensitivity and catching clues about how she doesn't like you. You annoy and disturb her. She wants you to go away because you're not worthy. It's like an imposter syndrome almost. I am not saying this to invalidate your approach. I think it's crucial. However, if anyone finds the seemingly quick trick difficult, it's completely understandable. And there's reasons behind it. Causality. Marcus replies and says, yeah, that's life. However, I don't exactly think it's wrong. I find that many important things in life come full circle. Women are just often the catalyst. Kind of like in math class when you knew the answer but had to show your work. Does it matter how you got there? No, but yes. I'll go to the gym to increase my looks for girls. Girls respond positively, positive spiral. Continue going to the gym after succeeding regardless of girls. Keeping up diet and schedule adherence, learning discipline. Fitness was for me this whole time. I'll ape the confidence of a dude bro because it seems effective, not because I like it. Everyone responds positively. I can affect the world with reasonable certainty, and I'm not as terrible as I thought I was, plus it's fun as hell. I am rewarded in several different ways in life, plus my assertiveness prevents a lot of abuse I may have taken before. I'm still the same core person with the same values. I just found better tools to approach the world. I need to make sure I stay free to be a high-value man. I need to be successful to get what I want, enslave myself to work in the name of freedom, learn to tolerate bullshit without being phased. Find that once successful, I love to add value to the lives of others through work and the process has transformed me into someone that can endlessly improve the lives of others. And what I wanted wasn't what I thought it was. If a tool works, power is only a tool who wields it, determines is good or bad. So yes, this is a good life lesson right here. You spend your whole life thinking about what you want only to realize what you needed was more important than what you wanted. Ghost says, hope you're doing well, Pete. In my experience, most of the time, it was easy enough to pick up on choosing signals from women, even if they didn't happen that much before my hard looks maxing journey. In general, I find it easy to tell when a chick is interested in me. If she sits in my proximity or looks in my direction repeatedly and or maintain eye contact for a few seconds or laughs at my stupid jokes. These are good indicators. The thing is, choosing signals are not a guarantee and can be quite confusing in some instances. Some women like to tease men, especially when they're in a group setting with other women, and reject said men when they take the bait and approach them. I've had that experience once, and it definitely threw me off and was a curveball for sure. Take it in stride. Her L, not yours. Reflecting on it, I've had much better results when women talk to me first. Same. Especially when I wasn't aware of their presence in the first place. Double same. Nowadays, I find it safer, easier, cheaper, and more efficient to pick up chicks online, not having to waste my money going places I don't really care about. To each their own. At the end of the day, women will make it obvious when they really like a man, and even if said man doesn't pick up on their choosing signals, they will chase him down like Jason Carvey and Scream. They will break rules for the men they find attractive. Yes. From what I've witnessed through people watching in bars, clubs, festivals, parties for many years, the rules are not the same for different people. Women react to Chad's Tyrones with much more enthusiasm, treat them with much more grace, and let them get away with a lot of shit. This is all 100% true. But what the women will sadly have to realize is that those guys, they are aware of this on some level, which is why they deploy a fast life mating strategy. They can't lock them down. Christian Botker says, Hi Pete, I chose option one, although this hasn't always been the case. Back in high school and most of college, I never really got choosing signals from women. So you're seeing a trend here throughout this whole video. In the younger years, men struggle, but then over time they hone the skills when they realize the blue pill bullshit they were told wasn't working. Some, some fuckery was afoot and we needed answers. I was always invisible or seen as the cute little brother type to girls. Brother zoned, that's the worst. 
Videos like yours and other Manosphere channels helped me get the grasp of things like choosing signals and body language before I ever got them. From that point on, I was hyper aware of these signals if they ever came so that I wouldn't miss out on opportunities. Practical. I've gotten a lot better at approaching girls, not in a PUA style, but just to shoot the shit, get over my approach anxiety, etc. And they're reciprocal for the most part, which I think it has to do with my muscular frame finally kicking in after years of working out. But I still struggle and get stuck in my head at times. The biggest struggle for me is that I often mistake choosing signals from a woman as her simply being kind to me and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. But um, I think honestly, the more organic a conversation is um, and the more open to different paths that the conversation can go, the better. So that if you do have a conversation that's kind of going in that platonic direction where she's not really giving you choosing signals, you could still kind of recover and like have a pleasant conversation. But if it is going in that direction where it's like clear, like she's making indicators like, hey, where's this going next? You also can adapt to that situation and entertain that as well. Now, an example I can give was back in college. I talked to and was friends with about three girls that were giving me pretty obvious choosing signals. Whenever I talked with them, they were always smiling, laughing, playing with their hair, showing open body language, and so on. I even caught one of them staring at me while I was working for like 20 seconds straight, only to find out from hearing them talk to their friends that they all three had boyfriends. Moments like that left me second-guessing the whole choosing signal thing. Women also, you have to understand, they're always... Potentially, not always, but potentially a good chunk of the time, they're looking to trade up for a man that has the things that she wants, but more of the things than the current guy that she's with. You know, this just sort of seems par for the course in uh, modern times. So a woman could always be window shopping even if she has a boyfriend, which is sad. But sadly, that's another reality as a man you have to deal with that it could happen. Ideally, though, you catch such behavior before you get too invested so that you don't have the pain of holding the bag afterwards. But another recent example I can give is at the gym. I was on the hip abductor machine when this cute girl set up on the machine next to me. Proximity. But she even did a set. She immediately took her sweatshirt off and was wearing only a sports bra underneath. I took that as a hint to approach and asked if I could use her machine when she was done. And she asked if she could use mine which led to a little laugh between us. I seemed to have it made, but then I got stuck in my own head and thought it would be too awkward to ask her name or spark conversation, so I just kept on my workout and thanked her before I left. The moment I got home, I realized how much I screwed up. This happened recently, so I could still figure it out, but it's just annoying to realize in hindsight. See, because you're still operating on fear of rejection here. That's what it is. You're still thinking like, hey, if I end up in an awkward situation, I can't recover from it. Instead of thinking like, oh, fuck, and I'm in my own head again, you should be thinking like, well, if shit does go south, how do I recover? You know, like you should be able to like make a joke out of it, be able to laugh at yourself, you know? And I think also besides that, um, by taking the gamble, there's always a chance that it can go in the right direction, you know? Like, let's say you ask a girl out to, um, to, for pizza or something, right? And she's like, uh, you know, nah, you know, I, I kind of have shit going on. It's like, well, yeah, you know, I thought it was a good idea, but okay, that's fine. No problem. And you just, you kind of turn that hard rejection into a soft rejection and then you just proceed. You just move on with your fucking day, you know? But um, sometimes you might, you might make a pass and, and it works. You know, it just, it depends. But uh, if you don't take the risk, yeah, you're just going to have interactions like this where, you know, she's smiling, she's giggling, she's laughing. And, um... You just, you don't take it anywhere from there because you're in your own head, which obviously isn't, uh, isn't a good thing. So work on that. There's still a chance to recover. Anyway, thanks for the good topic, Pete. I hope people can glean something from my experience. Also, I've now usurped my previous comments length. <laughs> All right. looks like the last comment, love cactus. As a guy, I might've gotten some signals, but since I don't like making assumptions, I can't say for certain. A lot of everyone's problems would be solved if women would be direct but I don't think they would want to give up the plausible deniability that comes with it, and I don't really blame them. Well, you have to understand the reason they don't want to give it up is because of the inherent difference in physical strength between men and women, the fact that uh, social disapproval via rejection meant exile from the tribe. You can't take the ooga booga out of people. So this is how women are. It's going to be this way. It's part of accepting the universe you currently inhabit. So 
very rarely are they just gonna magically change. Yes, you do get the neurodivergent person like fem cell to feminine from time to time, but what the fuck are the odds that you're gonna find someone like that who also meets all your other criteria? You know what I mean? So concessions have to be made if you're going to engage in the marketplace. So just be mindful of that. But um, yes, let's do a refresh one last time to see if there's any other comments. Looks like there is one comment, so let's check the YouTube Studio app to see where the comment came from. Okay, it came from Mr. Prim Rome. It says, over my head. Usually, it never even happens, so the very few times I had signals given, I missed them. Then again, this was relayed to me by friends who were less than trustworthy most of the time. Women expect men to just get it. If they don't, then that's often enough to be a deal breaker. Well, again, I wouldn't say it's um, it's enough to be a deal breaker in the sense that the woman is no longer attracted to him. I just think in the cost benefit analysis in her head, this guy is not attractive enough for her to convert from covert to overt communication. He's attractive to her still, but she's not going to take the risk. So I suppose that can be construed as deal breaker from a male lens, but at the end of the day, it doesn't mean she no longer finds you attractive because she still has the same information before and after the failed sending of the choosing signal. So yeah, there is that. Anyway, that's the video. That's everything that we discussed. That's where all the comments were. So hopefully that was very insightful. So let's call it a day. Feel free to leave a like, feel free to leave a dislike, call me an asshole. Whatever you do, don't report the video. It's good information. It's gonna help someone even if it doesn't help you. If you enjoy the content, hit the sub. If not, unsub. It's all good. As long as you get the info somewhere, cool. Hit the bell icon if you want notifications. I'm not really sure if it works, but if it does, hey, hit the bell. At the end of the day, we still adhere to the same rules on this channel, right? There are no absolutes, which I've made clear. Pay credence to intentions of those speaking. Don't just go off your interpretation. Ask for clarification if it's not clear. You know, a lot of different ways to look at these situations, so it's important to be mindful of that. Um and so on and so forth. But we are trying to prevent men who don't understand this stuff from prematurely self-deleting because of lack of context, thinking it's the end of the world because they got rejected or dumped or something like this. It's not. Um, also, giving you the comprehensive information, whether it's from me providing the information or from videos like this, where you get a more holistic approach and you see many perspectives on the same topic. Um, or just miscellaneous stuff that comes up as we go. And ladies, hopefully you get some useful insight, like for example, fem cell to feminine gets by watching this stuff. Uh, because again, at the end of the day, if it helps, that's a good thing. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. There's plenty of places to get information. As always, I am that guy, Pete, that you refuse to invite to gatherings. I will catch you for the next one. But for now, I got the rest of my day I got to get through. So I'll talk to you later. Take care.